Let's just jump into it today. I couldn't even wait for it to start. That's how much fun I'm having with these streams. Uh, so if you're just joining the chat or maybe you're watching this in the future, we have a text alert system now. Basically, YouTube has been terrible for a long time, and I've wishing, wishing, I've wished they've gotten better. But basically, they just, even our most engaged fans, they, they expressed it like, well, you know, sometimes people fall out of favor. And then there's when the members aren't getting signals, and they say, like, I double-checked it, I'm liking the videos. So we put in our own text message notification system down in the description. You'll find a link. You put your number in there. It goes worldwide. If you live in Germany, apparently they cost me like $10 billion to send you a text message, but that's A-OK. -okay. Uh, if you're in the U.S., it costs us about uh, one and a half cents. So, you know, part of, part of the uh, memberships will go towards paying for the text fees to send out when we go live. So that way I can go live at any time and you won't be caught. Although if I go live in the middle of the night and you get a text and your wife's angry, I apologize in advance. I'll try not to do that. Maybe I won't do it after certain hours. Who knows? But somewhere it's always 2 o'clock in the morning. So, yeah, if you want to get updates, do that down below. Maybe we'll do some other crazy stuff down the road, but primarily video releases and uh, going live. So, all right. Thanks to the new members. we got a poll going on, what to call it so far. In a landslide, the Nurm alert is winning. So, I came up with Nurm Insider Club. Last by a long shot. So that just shows how good I am and how good you guys are. Because Nerm Alert, once I read that, I was like, yeah, that's kind of the winner. That's just way better. It's kind of like Nerd Alert, but even better. So, all right. Well, today, I'm going to answer questions as I always do. I've got a little bit of stuff planned. And uh, nothing I can spill the beans on yet. I've been working on a lot of stuff. Oh, we do have new emojis. So there's that. You know, if you listen on the podcast, that won't affect you. But... Do know I'm working on all kinds of things to increase about every area of Aquarium Co-op's social media stuff. So just stay tuned. The NERM count, the NERM count is growing strong. I've got to be honest. Uh, as of before the live stream, we were at 2,299. But we've got a, a couple of late NERMers, late bloomers, if you will, at 2,301. So there we go. We have crossed the 2300 threshold and are on our way to that 10,000 mountain. Catching up on chat, seeing, seeing what's going on with the people. I haven't gotten YouTube's alerts in weeks for any of my subs, which is weird. I only, I only have alerts on for like two people, and one of them's my second channel. <laughs> uh, and I, I've never missed an alert ever. So that's why I was kind of like, I don't know what these people are having problems with. But, you know, I, I do know it was a problem. And my hesitation was basically the cost. You know, like today, for we had like 400 and some people sign up for it was $7, right? But I do believe that all the stuff Aquarium Cop does and the, and you guys buy from us and all that kind of stuff, it'll pay for it. So I'm not, I'm not worried about it. And I think it's just a better system overall. And... <laughs> Now I've got your phone number. Who knows? Maybe actually I don't have your phone number. I was like, ah, I could call you. I'm like I actually don't have your phone number. It, it's a company, so I can't even do it. <laughs> so I can't even surprise you with like a oh, a surprise wake up call or anything fun. So dang. Well, we'll figure out that system someday. The the Corey Mor Corey morning wake up. Is Corey and Co-op coming out with their own master test kit? Nope. I, well, the reason I, I don't plan to ever, unless it fell into my lap of like some company was like, we have the best test kit ever. We would love you to put your name on it. Sure, maybe. But I'm not going to go through the effort of designing and help build one because I just don't like the time it takes. And I don't believe in the aquarium hobby we need that fine of water parameters. You know, people will want to fight me. I should be at a desk right now with a, uh, you know, with a mug. Should I, sh should I leak stuff? Randy, Randy loves it when I leak stuff. So this this showed up on my desk a couple days ago. Randy is in love with this style of mug, and I'm not so in love with it because I think it's impractical. But then I saw this and I was like, oh my god, I think it's awesome. So maybe we'll get this coming in someday. But it's this stainless steel Murphy logoed. Oh, that's that's not. Let me if I can hide my face. Come on. There we go. Oh. One day. Maybe if I turn more lights on, I'll stress my eyes. Hold on. 
that help a little bit hide me there you go so you got the murphy on one side you got the aquarium co-op on the other so this mug unlike our other mug is right and left-handed <laughs> we learn from our mistakes and then it's got this you know like sipper top to it so i don't know these things could cost like a billion dollars what i do like about them is that if you ever go to jail you can run them along the bars so there's that and then uh, they won't break in shipping so i do like those aspects of it but i don't think it's microwavable not unless you want a light show so i mean that's the only way i can cook is via microwave so there's that but we'll see like they could be a billion dollars and you know uh randy's that guy that likes yeti products so need more ounces i thought the complete same thing i was like huh that's that's good for a few sips i guess but i i don't know it's it's got the three the three fingers reminds me of the three seashells shout out to uh demolition day but it's a decent thing maybe it just needs that fourth like it would go up a little bit i don't know if they make that i need it to be like this that big that's that's what we need so we're looking at it. i mean randy's randy and i are always looking at products and we you know what i don't like is there was a dent right here there's a tiny little dent and i'm like i'm always leery i'm like you couldn't get the sample to me perfect what are the odds that uh our production ones are gonna get here perfect so well we'll have to see that by the way don't even worry about asking that that stuff like even if we were like Let's do that. Like, and this already takes a while to like, you know, get the mock up and all that. We're six plus months out from getting anything where we could actually sell it and all that. So, you know. For the people that hate me talking about products and stuff, sorry. We're just this that's what the new the new stream is. The new stream is anything on Corey's mind we talk about. And uh today, let me find the right page. We've got some memes on the mind you read memes on the mind make sure my audio is working by the way i had one person a long loyal fan say the audio was a bit quiet in the past couple live streams so i turned it up a little bit if it's blowing out your eardrums i apologize but i am working on dialing it in i'll have to dial it again at the new studio which this might be the last stream here if everything goes right uh, if I am not lazy after live streaming, I'm going to pack all of this computer stuff up and move it to the new place. And then I don't know if I'm going to set it up today, but I will hopefully do that this week. So we're on the Aquarium Co-op website. If you've never been there, maybe you should. But uh, we have a forum and the forum has the memes and meme streams. We've done it once before. This will be a little meme image. Maybe I'll just uh, work in the memes a little bit each stream because... It's a bit much if it's two hours of memes, even for myself, but mixed in is pretty funny. And I, I usually, this is about the only, not the only time, but one of the few times in my day that I giggle, you know, and this is pretty good. This is a pretty good Photoshop right here. Nirvana, it's pretty good too. So, I don't, oh, I, I, I should, I should uh, give warnings that I don't specifically endorse any of this. Uh, there could be memes that are not 100% politically correct or anything like that. Like, I don't police this as in, I mean, is there something horrible? We would take it off. But most of these I haven't read. Like, I come in and I just kind of thumb through some and then I got to get back to work. And so if something's on screen that's absolutely horrible, then my apologies in advance. I, I don't think it'll be that way because that's not the, the NERM crew we're running over on the forums. It's It's not that way. But, you know... There could I right now there's always a bad actor like watch this I'm gonna post something horrible at the end which I probably won't go to the end and that's one of the reasons why I kind of pick some of the media the middle stuff so that it's relatively been uh, gone through. <laughs> the the problem is here's the big problem I have is I don't know how to make a good meme stream because I watch let's say you watch PewDiePie or you watch someone else and outside of something actually making you laugh you're kind of like. You have to give commentary and it's not comical. So I haven't found my style yet. My style of how do you make this funny? You know, other than I can actually say that, you know, this meme coming off the back of me talking about what it's like in Peru, it's true. There was like garbage everywhere and you see the cichlids breeding in it. And that's that's almost a better reality of the Amazon River biotope. You know, it's 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 funny how an Amazon River biotope usually shows like this traditional 
uh, set up on the left with sticks and branches and leaves. And that, there is some of that, but most of it is more of like terrestrial plants that got flooded. So even when we try to replicate it and we go, oh yeah, let's put Amazon swords in there. It's like, well, really you should get like trees and other stuff that's actually been flooded. So is it best if I read these? It's got to be best if I read them out because then podcast people, well, they can't see it. I don't know. Maybe the, maybe the meme streams out for the podcast. I know there's been, this thing, I don't even think it's a shrimp. I think it's a prawn, right? I'm pretty sure. I know that there are these, like these things, I could not have this in my hand. It grosses me so out when like uh, a blue wood shrimp or a uh, uh, Singapore shrimp touch me. And I don't know why, like crayfish too. It, it, I mean, I've been pinched by them. That's like, eh, whatever. But the actual like touching of the creepy legs, that's the horrible part. So, yeah. <laughs> It's giving me the willies, just even like remembering being touched by them. This one I thought was kind of funny that we do have quite a people that like fly in or come in from out of country or even just out of state. I, I would like to remind people that it would be very illegal to take meds back across a country like that without declaring them. You can you can definitely bring uh, aquarium products like normal stuff, but uh, yeah, I do feel the the pain. I honestly don't know what we'll do when there's no meds in the United States. Because, I mean, it will be like other countries. I get that part, you know. But I honestly, you know, hopefully our our herbal remedy game will just level up like over 9,000. And, and we'll have these these great, more natural things that don't get outlawed. But, you know, hopefully long ways away. That's my hope. <laughs> Ron Burgundy. Well, on the where on the where on the warehouse on the forum we do have a limit. You only get uh, something like twenty reactions a day, so that way you can't just give everything a like. You got to choose what actually makes you laugh. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm going random because I looked at these because I found the Nirvana one and I was like, I'll make that the thumbnail. So I'm going random. We're we're hitting the random button here. We're going to twenty seven, page twenty seven. Salt and pepper. Oh, for my is it for my good salt and pepper hair? I hope so. Oh, that could be like chia seeds. Oh man, yep. Although we should probably have someone, someone defends pineapple pizza that we know. That's like a, a figure. And what I mean by that is like I'm sure members love pineapple pizza, but there's like maybe Bob loves pineapple pizza. That's savage. Oh, it's so bad. It really is. Like I don't even like I don't even like pineapple on it. Like a cheeseburger, like the Hawaiian burgers. I can eat pineapple. Pineapple itself is delicious. Don't get me wrong. I like pineapple juice. It's all fine. Warm. No, I just can't. I bet you, I bet you Zenzo loves pineapple on his pizza. I I could believe that because he loves Hawaii. So I could just that's you know obviously a lot more pineapple and warmed up pineapple in Hawaii, and that's why I call it. Well, that's, I say stuff like that, and it never doesn't actually mean that. Like you could say like, well, that's why they call it Hawaiian pizza. That doesn't mean anything. That could just be, yeah. I have no idea actually. Oh man, the, my favorite part is I get to I make I get to make fun of Dean with these memes, and he he so rarely gets on the forum these days. It's been so busy. His life is uh, I'm not gonna say falling apart, but there's a lot going on in Dean's life right now. If we're lucky, we'll get up to meet meet up Tuesday, but that's even not even that's uh, for sure. Oh, getting hit up. <laughs> That's just a good thing right there. Yeah, I should I should uh, do some of the stream and nothing but green screen to make this easier. This is an old one too, look at that, I got the Murphy pin. That's old school. All right, I kinda wanna do questions because I, I can't figure out how to do this format better yet. <laughs> I know, I do feel bad when we launch new products and people like I just ordered. But there's, there's no, like if we just say like, there's a new product coming out this month, no one will order. And then we go out of business. So it just kind of has to be that like, well, order again, sorry. Yeah, when I tried to hide the, the test strips, by the way. It's an instrument. Um, they were on the, the front page and I had to actually get a developer because it was bugged and wouldn't go come off of there. 
All right. <laughs> yeah, do you guys see Corpus Oscar's live stream? He had the mustache on yesterday, and it was cracking me up. And it reminded me of... This, this is Bert, right? Yeah, Bert. It's got to be Bert. But yes. Oh, no. Here's a cartoon. There's more, to look, there's more to life than looking at the forum. Actually, it's a myth. Everything is the forum. It always has been. My dog's not the forum. Look again. <laughs> Sassy uh, had a little bit of a rough night last night, but she's been doing well. She got put on a little bit of weight. So, all right. Questions. I want questions. A little bit of memeage. I find my Congo puffers with three pandagaras and a 40 breeder. Probably works out all right. Spam and pineapple pizza, the real Hawaiian pizza. I do like fried spam. If it was fried and put on a pizza, maybe. With the pineapple, I would just pick it off of there. Although pineapple pizza is kind of better if you're eating the pizza cold. Kind of. It's still not great. A little bit better. All right. Welcome new members, by the way. I'm trying to develop, by the way, trying to develop some new segments to have more stuff to do than just answer questions. Um, all that's kind of trying to be built out and and more of a, like if you if any of you are nerds and uh, if you're nerds and you watch gaming live streams, more something like that. Like I don't want to game. That's not what I'm going to do. But having a little something to like little little bits to bring in, chime in, get some more viewer interaction. I've got a platinum biter for you. I'm not ready for it quite yet, Cody. That's part of the problem. Like I need I need to get a line on one, which you're the line now. But I also have to get the tank ready. I've got to move the 230 gallon uh, at minimum. And then I got to make sure it's not bigger than my eel at the moment. So my eel can have enough size to always stay grown bigger than it. Which I guess I could talk about that. A lot of, uh, a lot of fish keeping is timing. Oh, yeah, I'm going to end the poll because Nerm Alert won. Nerm Alert. Like, half the time when you ask, can the Congo Puffer go with the Pandagaras or any other fish combo, timing is very important. You know, has something lived its whole life in that tank for two years and it's going to be very territorial? Is it too big? Is it too small? All of those things actually play a pretty big part. And so, like, with this 230 gallon, I'm going to move it. And then I'm going to introduce like the eel and the ghost knife and uh, some other kind of oddball fish. And then it might be the right time depending on the size of that platinum biter. And, uh, you know, so a lot of it, it just, yeah, I have to grow stuff out or, you know, and you're not always ready for it. And so I, I move, buying fish while moving is super dangerous, especially when it's big fish. Small fish are easy. Um, but... Yeah, if you, you saw, well, maybe you saw, maybe you didn't. Uh, today, a video came out on the Steenfod Aquatics channel. I moved my koi, and uh, I also got some shrimp in that uh, are in that video as well. There's some Thai bee tigers I want to play with. I haven't been back yet. I didn't go there yesterday, so hopefully they're doing all right. But you can watch that video afterwards. I think it's like 20 minutes. Whew. Straight fire, by the way, because I'm in it. <laughs> You haven't been camping unless you've had a campfire, fried spam, and bologna. Hmm. I mean, I do love fried bologna. Fried spam is like 60%. Like sometimes like, ooh, that sounds good. And then there's like 40% like, heck no. Um, so on the campfire, well, I'm not good at, at cooking at all, let alone on the campfire. But it seems a little like another level of difficulty. If you can't cook it on a stick, I've got no hope. Half the time I can screw that up. Can I cut my water changes with RODI to soften the water for my discus? My pH is 8.2 and my water is super hard and they aren't growing well. You could. You could use an RODI unit. That would bring in very uh, acidic water with no minerals. You could cut it down. That being said, I, I always hesitate when it's a specific water parameter I would look at, you know, temperatures, the food you're feeding, what are your expectations? Are you just like thinking they're going to grow too fast? Because as, as an example, Dean's water is like 8.2 pH. He doesn't have that much hardness. So there is that. But 
Um, you could also, if you didn't want to use RODR water, you could do a planted tank and the plants will consume the minerals and over time the water will acidify also. Um, and then you'll bring water or minerals back in with your water changes. But I try not to, you know, with a, a discus tank, you have a pretty large tank. And if you have to do too much RO water, to me, it just becomes a big hassle. And then I stop enjoying it to the fullest uh, amount. Like I want it to be easy. Easy is what I'm into. <clears throat> Here in Sweden, the pizza places make pizzas with seafood like clams, shrimps, and sardines. Yeah, that's like in the UK, they have tuna fish on it and they'll do like Indian uh, curry pizzas. They're okay, I've had them. Um, <clears throat> I'll try a lot of weird things, but I think I remember seeing something weird at a, like a Papa John's in China. I didn't get it. I just got it like normal because when you eat it, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> when you eat it like a Papa John's in China or a McDonald's, you don't go there always to be like, what's the craziest thing they have? Most of you're going there of like the past three meals have been crazy weird or uh, I just want something normal. And when I be when I mean crazy weird, like and maybe they're watching, but we went out to this, this place in China where they basically serve chicken that is, for lack of a better term, not cooked. Like the like the skin and all that, it's still like gelatinous. And uh, if they it's like it was, it was not my thing. Like it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't my thing. And uh, it's a delicacy, and people love it, and you pay extra money for it. And there, there were people at the table that were just chowing down. It's the best thing they ever had. And for me, I was like, nope. But at the same time, like I've been at lunches with vendors and it's like uh, the language barrier is there. And so you're like, oh, I'm oh, I'm eating eel right now. Oh, and this is a root of something, huh? And uh, sometimes it's amazing. And sometimes you're like, Oof, man, OK. And you don't even like if you go somewhere where you don't I can't speak the language, it's hard to go. OK, so I don't want that. But do you have something more like this? And uh, so, yeah, somewhere like a. Uh, a restaurant you know can be a welcoming sign if you're there for a couple weeks and you're like, yeah, let's let's do that pizza. Let's do something else. Plus, typically the Western restaurants will have a Western bathroom, which is <laughs> worth its weight in gold. Thanks for stopping by, Timothy. Hopefully you guys are getting a lot done today. It's Sunday. Can you talk about supplementing iron to root feeders? Um yeah, mostly you would get, the only way I really know to do it besides like the root tabs that we would have would be, um, it's like, it's a red clay. And I'm not even sure where I'd buy it because I never do it, honestly. Uh, you could also use like a red fluorite, but I honestly question how much red, well, here's what I question. With like a fluorite, like a red fluorite, how much red does that bring to the plant versus how much fuel for the algae is that just going to be? And I never liked how fluffy it was, and so I, I never really utilized it. I, I played with it, but I just never got the results I really was looking for. So um, I typically use just root tabs, and I dose some like easy green or easy iron in the water column because plants usually primarily will take like 75% their preferred way and 25% their non-preferred way. So like a crip, they would be mostly... Um, root feeding and then they can take some from the water and you know, that's they just have that so if they get starved out of one or the other they can at least stay alive uh, my wife's asking if i'd like any broth nope i just had a frog in my throat I'm, I'm good to go i've got my water and it's it'll get me through this ah for two years in college my lunch consisted of bologna and Swiss on white microwave for 30 seconds. Wow. I'm a guy that uh, can eat the same thing every day. But even that's that's a little brutal. Like there's no there's no condiments on that. I would hope there's like, I don't know, butter or mayonnaise or something. I'm not a big fan of Swiss cheese either. That I'll eat it on a burger if I had to, but if it's too I don't know, if it tastes like it's too moldy to me, it's not good. How can I tell if my crib eggs are fertilized? Hmm. I would say really you shouldn't be able to outside of like they're going to lay them in a cave most likely. 
usually it's just the the female will guard them and then you wait for the best like I, I feel like you're gonna do more damage trying to flip that cave over or look inside there maybe they'll get spooked and they'll eat them but I'm actually not sure I've ever had a pair of cribs lay eggs that weren't fertile like usually when they're ready to breed they just do it and uh, outside of that they just fight a bunch did I see your comment for naming the black ghost knife Casper I did I saw a lot of comments um, and what's weird is, like, the few people I talked to, we were all going, who is Mac? What is this about? We did not know Mac the Knife. Uh, but I think the winning name that I, I like, my wife said we should name it Spoon. And that's, that's kind of my sense of humor of, like, yeah, of course you'd name a knife fish Spoon or Spork or, you know, anything like that. So should have named it Ladle. <laughs> but I, I like Spoon. Spoon's a good one. So I'll probably go with that. Not 100% decided yet, but yeah, there's a lot of good a lot of good options. How would I raise the pH in a tank of Neocardinia? It's 6.2 to 6.4. I would get crushed coral. Um, now we sell it at a high price. Let me find it. Uh, I think it's under... I don't remember what we keep stuff under anymore. Water treatments, I think. Yeah. So we've got crushed coral. We sell it for five bucks a pound. And there's been plenty of people like, that's crazy, man. I can go to my local fish store and I can get a bag, 20 pound bag for like 20 or 30 dollars. Yeah, they're not shipping it to you. Like we're shipping pounds of stuff. And the problem is people are like, oh yeah, I bought three pounds. And then they put it, you know, with plants, that kind of stuff. We gotta be really careful they're not getting crushed. So that's why we have an elevated price with crushed coral. Um, but this is the way I would do it. So I mix in crushed coral, basically uh, one pound per 10 gallons of water. I mix it into the gravel and that will slowly raise the pH. Now you wanna make sure you rinse this really well because um, it'll raise the pH kind of fast and cloud your water. You can use something like just a pound or even less in your filter. It'll raise pH much faster, which can be dangerous sometimes. Uh, also, you'll have to replace it much faster. So like I did a post on the community page saying, you know, I've been running a lot of people, they had crushed coral, but they're not checking up on it and their pH crashes. You know, it, it does buffer for a long time and it depends on how many water changes. You might have crushed coral that lasts you two years. You also might have a person where crushed coral lasts them three months because they're changing water twice a week. And so uh, even though you still physically have crushed coral, that doesn't mean it's easy to dissolve. Like if you've ever seen brand new concrete or something like that, uh, water will wear away at it and get a lot of the minerals out, but then or road, same kind of thing. But then you'll be left with this, the really hardened stuff that doesn't really dissolve into water anymore. And so you kind of, you get into a false sense of, of security with that of like, oh, I had it, but I didn't see it. All right, I see that I have it, but I didn't realize that the pH is going down. And something like, obviously, plug my test strips. Uh, something like that, you know, even just once a month will clue you in. Because it doesn't just go from like, pH is great to it's gone. It's like, oh, pH was, it's always been 7.2, and then I tested a month later, like, oh, we're at 7. Huh. Okay, well, you know, maybe you test a month later, like, oh, we're down at 6.6. Six. Like, okay, yep, I, I kind of saw that coming. And uh, and if you have a lot of tanks like I do, you know, a lot of times I'll put crushed coral on all of them the same day. So then you can, like, you just got to test, like, one of the tanks. And, oh, okay, yeah, I should probably, I should put, like, a handful in. That's what I do, honestly, is I buy crushed coral in bigger bags, and then because I have a big fish room and when that something like that goes on, I basically am just taking like a handful, I'll rinse a bunch and put it into a bucket and then I'll take like a handful per tank. And then what'll happen is next time I gravel back or something like that, it'll get mixed into the gravel better. And uh, that's how I manage my pH. But luckily the new place has a little bit higher pH and a lot more minerals. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how that changes the way I keep fish. So it'll give me the, the other perspective now I don't have crazy hard water, so uh, you know I won't have that that uh, liquid rock water to help people with yet. All right, crush coral versus the wonder shell. Yeah, so the thing to know about that it's it's real easy to confuse. the The wonder shells here they add lots of Lots of minerals like calcium and, well, mostly calcium. Like there's, there's some other trace elements in there. Um, but they add lots and lots and lots of calcium. Now, crushed coral can add some calcium, but not nearly as much as it does for buffering uh, pH 
So I would say that crushed coral is best used for pH and alkalinity. So kind of getting your pH up and buffering it. And wonder shell is best for adding minerals, mostly calcium for uh, fish, snails, invertebrates, that kind of stuff. Plants too. It, that That's actually a good point. I, I, at some point I will develop a product that will be specifically targeted for plants that is mostly like calcium and magnesium because like in my water I don't have any and so I do have to use Wonder Shells or Equilibrium uh, one of those two products and there, there's some other stuff you can use uh, on the market as well but if you're if you're lacking way too much calcium magnesium you'll get deficiencies in your plants also and that is like there is some in the easy green but it's really hard to dissolve it that's why a lot of times you see these are blocks instead of uh, a liquid form and so you can also use um, uh, marine salt. Marine salt, so from a freshwater keeper's perspective, marine salt is kind of take crushed coral, take wonder shells, take a little bit of the fertilizer and like crush it up into a very fine powder that's very potent. And a little bit goes a long way in a freshwater tank and it brings a lot of trace elements in and uh, it'll buffer your pH and your hardness, or yeah, you know, well, your hardness and your your uh, alkalinity. And if you kind of think about it, the way the world works is kind of everything funnels back to an ocean. So the ocean ends up having about every nutrient or mineral in it, and uh, you know it won't replace strictly you know fertilizers because specifically in a reef tank you don't want high phosphates, potassium, and uh, uh, like nitrogen, right? but it'll bring a lot of the other stuff. So while like Ezergreen has most of what you need, the other could be made up with marine salt or um, you know, wonder shells, equilibrium, those types of products. And, and we do, we are bringing out our own salt. It'll hopefully be here in the next three months or so. And it's, it's just a marine salt. And we're, we're only selling because we sell brine shrimp eggs. And I, I, get, I like the hatch better with actual marine salt. Um, but being that I have it around all the time, I will use it more in some of my tanks. And it's just a pinch. You know, it's not a lot. Like when I was really testing it probably 12 years ago, my first fish room. Is that my first? Yeah, my first fish room. Uh, I was doing one teaspoon per 20 gallons. That's what I was testing kind of after water changes. Now, if you don't have live plants, that's going to build up and could be a problem. But with live plants, for the most part, um, they would consume all the, the minerals. Now, they won't consume the salt, I don't think, like the actual NACL. So I didn't test it for years on end. Like maybe the salt salinity creeps up after like eight years of doing a pinch at a time. I suspect that most of us don't keep tanks that long. Water comes out from catching fish, drop dripping on the ground, bagging fish, all of that kind of stuff. So I, I suspect it wouldn't be a problem unless you're really just going ham on that salt, which I don't recommend either. Aragonite sand is a good comparable for crushed coral and it's 788 per 20 pounds of Petco. I 100% disagree. Not about the, you can get, you know, 20 pounds for 788, that's fine. But in my experience, throughout my testing, I've never had the same dissolving rates and the same stability out of aragonites that I have from uh, crushed coral. And I've tested probably 10 different aragonites. They, they do do the same thing, but they take much, much longer to dissolve in. And I was running into problems with water changes and things like that, it, it does work. And I do like that you can get black that, that blends in with a lot of substrates. But for me personally, having very acidic water, uh, I never found it to work the same as a crushed coral. Um, and, and different crushed corals, by the way, dissolve at different rates. Like we chose our crushed coral specifically because it was a rate in which I enjoyed. Um, and I have had other crushed corals where it's like, man, this is not dissolving very well. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm not, I don't want it to come off like, oh, aquarium co is only the good one. That's not true at all. Just know that if you're not getting the results you're trying to get out of your crushed coral, know that maybe it is that source of crushed coral that's not as good as another one, or maybe it's aragonite and that's going to take longer to leach into the water. Um, so just know that there are different types. That's basically what it comes down to. So that, I, I just, I don't think it's comparable. It's, it's a decent product. If you're going to do the entire aquarium all aragonite, yeah, possibly that'll, but if you're looking to just put in, you know, a pound per 10 gallons, I have not found Aragonite to um, do as well for me at all. But, you know, if I was doing sand dweller or sand, you know, sand dwellers or uh, shell dwellers, something like that, it could work. But I, even then, I would, I'd still, 
I would still go with crushed coral sand for me personally. I think twice about ordering heavy stuff from the co-op can't be good for your bottom line. Uh, I mean, everything on the website technically will be profitable. It might only mean we make 12 cents, but we usually we won't lose money unless something goes horribly wrong, like uh, uh, it just gets lost in the mail or anything like that. Um, I, I think overall, like... Even if we don't make money, let's say we make the 12 cents, right? On a good day, we made 12 cents because you bought like the crazy heavy stuff or whatever. You'll still tell people that like, hey, I ordered from Aquarium Co-op and I got this product and that product there. I like them. And so then we're getting 12 cents plus like a positive customer experience and the marketing. And so when someone comes and buys test strips, like test strips are great. They're small. They're light, right? They ship pretty well. And so it's it's... Part of our, or part of my thought process is not everything I do has to make money. It can't lose money. That's one thing I, I we can't be losing money from doing things, but, um, you know, if, if five out of six things that we do are making money and then one out of six things is breaking even, we're still a positive company and we have no problems at all. And so I would not dissuade you. If there's ever any, anything that's ever that bad, like we used to sell substrate online and, it got to a point where as the cost kept rising, um, it didn't make sense anymore because the product itself, like whenever costs go up for shipping, it hits you double basically. So when we ship it to you, it costs us money. But when we get it shipped to us, it costs us money. And so every time the post office, let's say, raises it by 5%, it really becomes a 10% increase to us. And you get to a certain point where um, – you'll just look like you're gouging the customer. And, and that's kind of what the Crush Coral is. Like, $5, that's insane. It's like, well, we're just shipping rocks at this point, and it's not not efficient to ship rocks. And so, um, yeah, that's... But yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't avoid it at all. You know, just look at it like an even exchange of like, maybe, like maybe you go out to dinner and you're, you're like, okay, I want, I'm going to be pain in the butt here. I want it so that like... All my veggies are on the side. I want my condiments over here, not on my burger. And it's just like, oh, yeah, yeah, we can do that. It's not that big of a deal, you know, but it's not as easy as like, yeah, just make the same burger over and over and over again. So it's not that big. It's not that big of an inconvenience or anything. So I, I would definitely encourage you, don't feel bad at all. Does my airline get hard over time? I did the clear silicone line a few years ago, and I've, it's already getting hard. Um I would say I haven't had my airline tubing long enough to know how many years it can go. I've got, you know, 18 months or something on it. And it's still real flexible. And that's compared to other tubing, competitors tubing that I used before we had our own. But I don't, I probably need five more years before I can tell you like, yeah, legit, lasts at least five years. Um, it's kind of like LED lights. It's like, well, how do you know this LED lasts for 12 years? It's been out for 12 minutes. Right, so you kind of have to go. Well, some good faith. We know it was made out of. We we did test it some. We've done these things, but I don't want you to replace a whole fish room on my airline tubing. And then you go, man, it got it got hard too after four years. You said forever. Like, well, no, I'm not saying that. Um, you know, I would just be. I, I think ours is really good. I I try to carry the best products. Ours is food grade PVC. It's not silicone. Silicone. Has had that problem in the past, but um, yeah, that's that's all I got. That's all I got. It's cheap, but I, I realize the money is not the aspect of it. It's the replacing it. Like we have to replace our store every once in a while because we were using competitors airline tubings that get hard, and it's just the work that it's not fun. Uh, I have hard water to begin with. Coral was overkill. Regnite was better for me. Uh, I did mean as a total substrate also. Well, that's good to know, yeah. So as a total substrate, I can see it working because it's it's enough is just to sprinkle in crushed coral has always done me better. And I, I'm not a huge fan of using crazy chunky substrates. I, I kind of like um, like medium, like not quite gravel. Which are, some of the new tanks do have gravel, but like a little bit smaller, like a smaller gravel is what I like. How is crushed coral collected for distribution? Does it have uh, negatively affect any marine environments? I have no idea. Like I could sit here and be like, oh yeah, I purposely, or I, I, I oversee the process. That's not true. Um, 
I, I, I don't think, I mean, I don't think anything in the world doesn't have an impact on a marine environment at this point. Like the fact that you're on a computer has an impact on the marine environment. But, you know, I, I think what you're trying to say is, is this just horribly killing the environment? To the best of my knowledge, no. Uh, usually it's harvested and it's crushed up and it's already dead. So there's all of those aspects to it. Now, I have not spent you know, the last five years of my life like making sure and checking. We do buy from an ethical source. We've done cursory research into it and it seems to be good. But you know, as, as with anything, if you're not there every day, like how do we know? You know, you could know that, but there's no incentive. Like live coral would just be more work to process and all of that. And, and from what I know, it's mostly you can find just like beaches where it's washing up. And uh, that's why you see like lots of clam shells and that kind of stuff in it because it just washes up. You sift the sand out of it and now you've got the crushed coral. You rinse that really well and then you essentially, boom, you now have crushed coral. I just got an eight parts per million ammonia reading. Can I help explain ammo lock and do I support it? No, I don't support it. Uh, so ammo lock is like, let's say you got a super messy room. Kind of, I mean, my room's pretty messy, but you can't really see it because it's off camera. But let's say I got like a bunch of junk over here. I have an uh, air conditioner. I have a, a fish tank sump. I've got a monitor stand, I've got some cardboard boxes, right? What ammo lock does is it shoves all of that into the closet and it's like, look, it's not there anymore, right? Uh, whereas really what you should do is go through it, get rid of what you don't need, donate it, throw things away, recycle. And that's what you should be doing with uh, ammonia, is water changes. You know, if you do a 50% water change, you'll drop to four parts per million. So you might have to do that, and then a couple hours later do another 50%, another 50%, and get yourself down to like 0.5 or under, and then let the bacteria catch up and um, take care of that. Now what Amalok does, in case people are you know, wondering, is what it does, it changes as a, a chemical that bonds with it. It makes the ammonia basically non-toxic, and it lasts for about 24 hours. Now after 24 hours, it, the bond breaks and the ammonia is now toxic again. So in a roundabout way, what you could do is like water change 50%, get down to four, put an ammo lock, wait a day, um, well, not quite a day, but you know, let's say 18 hours, water change again, uh, ammo lock again. But my, my big thing is we can test for ammonia. And so if ammonia is really high, there's usually lots of other stuff in there, not just the stuff we test for like nitrite, nitrate, anything like that, but at a point where we get any one thing in super excess in water, there's likely other things that are in excess as well. And so while ammo lock would take care of ammonia, what about other things that we're not testing for that could be elevated? And so that's where I come back to, well, let's change water. I'll change the water and get the things that I know I can watch in control. And then hopefully that'll get other things in control that I can't test for. So, um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of it because it, to me, it's just, it's not actually addressing the problem. Like it, it addresses, it's a band-aid fix. That's actually what I'm trying to get to. Does it raise levels on API test kits? I don't, I, I don't use a product that often, um, but I don't believe it, it actually will raise it higher than it would have naturally been. So I think you're okay there. Sand is big business since most beaches buy sand to replace erosion. Interesting. I've never been in the sand game. Prime also binds ammonia. Yeah, uh, Prime, Ultimate Water Conditioner from Akari. A bunch of water conditioners will bind up uh, the ammonia. And the reason why like Prime or Ultimate has that in there is because when you have like chloramine in your water and you break the bond, it, you basically have free floating ammonia. Now, we don't really notice this in most of our aquariums because we have bacteria, just digest it in a timely manner, we're okay. Um, but one of the good things is with that ammo lock or you know, basically the chemical it's gonna bind and prime and all that, it will um, make sure it's non-toxic so that the filter can digest it in a timely manner. So it's like a little bit extra. Uh, I'm not sure we need it, but I still, I still maintain 
just get the ammonia out of your water. It, you know, just because it's not showing, well, it shows up on a test kit, but just because the fish aren't dying, I'm still not certain that it doesn't have an effect on there. I just, it leaves me uneasy, so. Yeah, if you live in Florida, all tubing's gonna get hard in like six months. I, I definitely have seen some fish farms where the tube is just like, it's like a rock hard, it, like there's so much calcium that you'd like it just, you could like pull the tubing out and you'd be left with a, like a stick that you could snap. It's crazy. I've seen sponge filters that are just a rock. Like they don't do anything anymore. They're just a rock. So, yeah. Can you keep guppies in slightly acidic waters? Uh, endlers do better. Over time you could. Like if you started out with like neutral water and kept breeding generations, you can get them to be pretty hardy. But a lot of times if you just take um, a store-bought guppy and you throw it into like 6.8 pH water, it's just gonna fall apart on you. So I would say start higher first. It's kind of like what I'm doing uh, in the video that came out on Friday about my mollies. I put some salt in there, so it raised the pH and it raised the minerals and everything. And then over time, the water changes are gonna lower that level down and that's gonna give them time to adapt. And if I do it on a long enough track, it's the babies that are gonna raise up in a little bit more acidic water and over time, each new generation of babies will become more and more used to your water. And a lot of breeders will um, kind of talk about fish don't really like your water until you're two generations deep. So if you bought fish at the store, you have one set of babies and then they grow up and you have another set of babies, that set of babies are the ones that are gonna be much more likely to really thrive and have the best color and all the traits you want in your water. Doesn't mean they didn't look good on the way there, but to truly get fish that are really well adapted to your water, your style of fish keeping, um, a lot of people say it's two generations, which, you know, that might take, you know, maybe it's a year per generation. I mean, you could do it faster, but maybe it's a couple years in your care and you've got a couple generations. Uh, a lot of times they'll be looking really good. And then when you bring them to your house, you know, if it was a friend, hey, they're not doing quite as well. Well, you can do that two years to really settle in. Well, thank you for the sticker. We've been playing uh, the little bean thing, or apple, or, or pear, I guess. The pear has a, a mirror. We've been playing some ping pong. There's some fierce competition. No one knew that uh, Steam Fought Aquatics apparently has played a game of ping pong or two. I think he only lost once, and uh, I probably went one for ten against him or something. It was, it was uh, a savage beating from the Sasquatch. What about ammo lock? A few drops in shipping bags, or does a low pH in the bag make that a a, a mute point? Um, well, I'm trying to think of how to explain through this without someone hearing this and then not getting into trouble. So what can happen there is there's a lot of CO2 buildup in the bag. That will drive the pH down. If there's ammonia in the bag, 6.4 pH and lower, it changes ammonia into ammonium, which is non-toxic to fish and inverts. The problem is, when you open that bag from shipping, oxygen comes in and it could raise that pH to above 6.4. Let's say it was at 6.4, you open the bag, it goes to seven, now you have high levels of ammonia. Could you put a couple of drops of amylock in there? You could, yes, or prime or anything like that. That's what saltwater people do. That being said, what I do, I always just get the, the fish straight into the tank. Now again, we can test for ammonia, but what about all the other buildup things in the water we don't test for? Like we don't test for how many meds are in there from the previous supplier. We don't test for heavy metals or, or anything else typically. And so when I know that one thing is high, I worry about other things are gonna be high. and. This is just my method. I always kind of do the, the plop and drop. Just get them into the new tank, get them settled in. I honestly believe a lot of times we're trying to do the best, but you've got them in a little container and you're trying to acclimate them and every you know 10th shipment you get one that'll jump out and that's not good. You're walking around working with other fish and it's constantly like running into the side because it's spooked. Like there's all these things that cause stress. And so my goal is to minimize all of that and Moving into the water, regardless of acclimation or not, is typically a stressful thing. There's gonna be new tank mates, there's gonna be all this stuff going on. So I just wanna to get to that point the fastest and minimize 
the chances for me to make a mistake. Really, it's how do I minimize human mistakes? And that's the process that's worked the best for me. You know, you don't forget and go, oh, I went, uh, you know, I was like, can I acclimate 15 minutes? I sat down to eat dinner, watched Shawshank Redemption for two and a half hours. Oh, yeah, I got fish. I got to put them in. You know, something like that. Should I only dose easy green when my nitrates are at zero parts per million, or can I dose if they're at 10 to 20? Uh, you can dose if they're at 10 to 20. If they're above 20, I wouldn't dose. Um, usually that's a buildup of easy green. If you know it's not a buildup of easy green, you might have just way too many fish, or you might be feeding way too much, and therefore you might have to work on balancing your tank out, maybe less food or less fish, so that you do uh, have enough room to put fertilizer in there to feed the plants fully, because Fish food won't fully feed the plants. It'll get you about 70% there, you know, roughly. What fish go good with turtles to help keep the tank thriving? Uh, depends on the type of turtle, but usually quick fish that are pretty hardy. Sometimes goldfish will work, sometimes. Uh, Chinese algae eaters are really fast. They can work. Um... Endlers work really well for me just because I can breed a bunch and they'll just eat little, eat all the little stuff. So yeah, I, it's, it's hard because you have to know what type of turtle, what size tank, what kind of water parameters are you going to do? How much are you staying up on it? There's a lot to consider. So <laughs> I don't have any room for air hockey candy. Don't worry. I don't. I'm, I'm choosing to build a gym instead of, basically air hockey and stuff so better choice for me I guess can you use an air pump for an aquarium to put air in the bag for shipping fish uh, yes you can and like it'll just be normal room air yep that would work just fine it takes a little while to to blow a bag up um, and in fact like some fish like Anabantoids, so grammies and uh, bettas and things like uh, Corydoras, you don't want to use pure oxygen. A lot of others you can, um, but I think it's a little overkill. Unless you're a professional fish shipping company, there's no real reason to be using oxygen. And it, it will matter on the long stretch, but I prefer to give more water and more space if I can. So, um, yeah, I think if you're, I, for me, for most fish, not real big ones or anything like that, for most fish, if you're properly putting the right amount of fish to bag ratio, you shouldn't really need pure oxygen. Or use breather bags, either one. Can I talk about spawning Corydoras, uh, stir by Corydoras? Specifically, the best water parameters for breeding. Well, I would say... No matter what I say, it, it's like going to be taken like that's what it's supposed to do. Stability is the most important factor. Like feed them really, really well. Keep the water relatively clean. Have decent amount of flow in there. And then kind of like somewhere between 7 and 7.6 seven, in that neutral zone, you'll probably get breeding out of them. It's, it's actually pretty easy to get stir by corridors to lay eggs. Now, if they're not hatching out, what could be happening is your water could be too hard or your pH could be too high. Um, but for me personally, I, I don't think like if you just hit like, oh, I'm exactly 7.0 and I got this and this and this going on, they're not breeding. It's so much more about are they thriving in that environment? Is there people stressing them out? Are they getting really good high quality food, real fatty foods to build eggs, right? Make sure you have enough males and female ratio. Make sure they're old enough. Making sure that it's not too hot or too cold. I let things go seasonally typically in my fish rooms where I don't want anything really getting under 70 if I can help it. And then in the summer they might go to 82 because it's getting really hot, right? But then they cool back down. So they get the seasonality. Uh, and then also encouraging them by like live foods, like live baby brine, lots of microfoods encourage fish to know that there's uh, baby fish food around. So, hey, we should have some babies. Those are all the things I would actually focus on. And if you focused on that for a year and they're, after they've already been big enough to breed and you're not getting it, then sure, you can start dialing stuff in. But most people, they get a new fish. 
like steer buys. They've had them for a month. Now they're going to get everything perfect. And they're like, they're not breeding. It's like, great. You are 18 months too early. Like you need way longer until they're settled in. They're old enough. Their reproductive organs are ready to go. All of those things. So, um, yeah, great environments. Make great environments. That's what fish tanks are. Let's make our own great environment. You didn't get the notification, Wendy? Well, look in the description, sign up for text alerts, and hopefully you'll never miss one again. Uh, I won't spam you guys other than when I go live, when I uh, release a video, and then anything else that I feel is important. And I'm not going to be one of those companies like, oh, man, look at this meme. Like, you know, it's not going to be every day. It's like I honestly hope that it's basically like two a week, and then like maybe once every month or two, it's like, hey, there was a ninth one because there was actually something worthy of like, hey, you should know this. Like this is actually an important thing to know about or whatever, or there's an extra live stream. Um, and it costs us money too. That's the other thing. It's like, I'm not just gonna like check out the meme. Oh, it cost me $60 to send that. Once like once this thing grows, it's gonna be real expensive to send them. So it's not just, um, but there is another, there is another text option. Uh, if you put in your phone number as you're checking out on the website, uh, we can send text there. I don't have any plan, but maybe it's someday, maybe I'll do like new items. When there's a new item release, I'll send a text. I don't know. I haven't played with it. And I'm, I'm not big on companies texting out because I, I personally hate it. Um, but if people opt into it and they want it, I totally respect that. Have I tried using clamps as substrate? Yes. Uh, basically, my living room tank, the 230 gallon, it's basically all crushed clams which is kind of like crushed coral thank you to the new members by the way i know i say a lot but that's because we keep getting new members it's good <laughs> i would love the meme if, if the right meme shows up maybe someday there'll be a text meme uh, I'll, I'll wait till it's like three o'clock in the morning i'll send a meme that just says like real nerves don't sleep and I, I can't think of the clever picture yet. But also, our, our texting thing did say we can only send ima small images and GIFs in the United States. They won't go outside the United States. So I can only serve about 55% of our audience. The other 45% are outside of the United States. Uh, if I buy plants from the aquarium co-op, is, is there any way to request you not remove the snails before shipping? Nope. Uh, at this point, the warehouse is a giant big Borg center where... Um, by the time you get an order, four or five different people have uh, touched that order and in no way relation to your order. What I mean by that is like if we are going to ship out 100 uh, Valisneria, those get packed at the beginning of the shift and we pack 120 probably because we know orders will come in. And at some point, those will get picked and put into your order and then uh, another person is going to pack your order. And so there'll be at least four people typically that touch every order that come in and out of Aquarium Co-op. And so getting everyone on the same page of like, no, 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 this guy or girl wants the snails uh, is pretty much an impossible task. And it doesn't mean it wouldn't be in the future, but I don't see a path of like, short of creating some kind of like special side, uh, a special side, Fears. I don't, I don't know how to explain because that's going to be like, oh, of course, trying to get more money. Like, no, 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 I'm just trying to accommodate. Uh, but if we had like a like a, a special needs order type of thing, we're like, oh, yeah, this thing needs this or this they're requesting this or but that's so hard to accommodate that uh, we just haven't figured it out yet. All right, it's time to finally address this question. I think Eric's been asking it for about three months. Can I talk about the evolution of my wedding ring? I noticed over the years it has changed. Would the metals in my wedding ring affect my water parameters? So uh, first, I don't believe any wedding ring is ever going to affect the water parameters outside of if they were to trap soap or lotion or something like that in your hands. Like if that was trapped into your ring and then you had your hands in your tank for a long time, possibly. I don't think so, though. Uh, for me, my evolution has been the first ring I ever got was one of those silicone bands, and it was like a little bit too big. And it was like kind of falling off, and I just stopped wearing it. Uh, then I got another one, and that was kind of too tight, or it was tighter. And then the water would get caught underneath it, and it always like, I don't know, smelled smelled a little different and felt weird. So I didn't like that because my hands were always in tanks. 
while I was working at the shop. So then I didn't wear a wedding ring. Then I thought, okay, well, I'm not in the store as much. I'm going to buy this uh, vintage, like, it's not here, but it's it's an onyx stone with, uh, uh, with white gold. And what I don't like about that is it gets in the way a lot of times when... Uh, I'm moving tanks and I'm lifting it and it it just like I'm afraid it's gonna cut my finger off uh, That being said All the way until like now like any day now. I'll have a very very minimal band showing up uh, I think it's four millimeter. I wanted like the smallest possible ring uh, and I'm gonna try wearing that so yeah, it's I for me, me personally, I don't think I have to uh, wear a ring to sh to to like signify that I'm married or anything like that. Like I, I know the bond between Katie and I. That being said, I do think it like rings look good and uh, yeah. So I kind of want to wear one, but I I don't like the uh, I don't like to slow myself down in work or whatever I'm doing. Like I don't like to be hindered by something. Like I am the definition of comfortable. I wear. Amazon cheap t-shirts. I'm wearing slippers right now and some like sweat shorts from Costco like Yeah, <laughs> I uh, I'm In my life, I'm only moving towards less fashionable more comfortable and I think most I feel like most people have that evolution because you always meet a lot of people that are older than you and you're just like man that guy just doesn't care. He's like living his best life. And I'm like, I need to be that guy. Yeah, more sweats. Bring out more sweats. Does anyone know if breeding reticulated hillstream loaches and panda loaches can be done at the same time in the same tank? I bet it could be if you had enough flow going. Like you're gonna need a lot of flow so the eggs really get pushed down into the gravel. And obviously size, you know, a, a big large aquarium I think will do that as well. I've had 30 mono shrimp die in one of my tanks a few days ago. Ooh, all parameters seem normal. The pH is seven, uh, TDS 93. Could something have been eating them? Definitely something could eat them. A lot of times if something's eating them, you won't see the bodies, right? Now there could be harassment, like a gourami could be harassing them, but usually that's like, you would, you would never see 30 at once. Whenever you see big die offs like that, Almost every time it's going to be uh, traced back to um, an environmental thing. And so, like, that is that is one instance where I'd be like, huh, if everything tests out great, what's the water temperature? And then I would ask, like, do you ever put lotion on your hands? Are you washing your hands? Could there be any way a contaminant made its way into that water? Because it's, it's usually... Um, it's usually one of those environmental factors. Something something has gone wrong enough to kill a bunch and not just, well, my Grammy's hunting them. He gets one every few days type of deal. Yes, I, my, my ring that I did order is a uh, comfort style ring. So I'm hoping it's supposed to have less edges. Um, yeah, I just... It's, it's a fine line for me. I don't like it being wet underneath there and my hands go in an aquarium often enough. I'm always moving stupid heavy stuff and oftentimes my hand is in a position it shouldn't be, you know, where it's going to get crunched. So, and I also don't want to lose it. That's the one thing I, I really don't like is like, I don't I really don't want to lose it because that's a symbol of like, you really don't care. So I don't want to lose it. Like I have my rings. Um, yeah. <laughs> bring out more sweats should be on my tombstone yeah I actually uh, kind of started a, a personal Instagram which is not really personal it's just not uh, it's not branded for like aquarium co-op stuff like just my own crap uh, and I called it flip-flop retirement and it's because I when I retire not that I'm ever really gonna retire but I just want to I just want to be at a point in my life where I can show up to a flu ball meeting and I'm just like in my attire right now instead of slippers I'm rocking some flip-flops and I'm just like Hey, I got a NERM army behind me, and we like to be comfortable. We like to do it the easy way. We like to enjoy what we want to enjoy, and I'm not here to impress you, Fluval. Not that I only show up to impress them, but you, at a certain point, you do need to show up like you want to do business. Like if I just show up and I've got a stained, 
I've got stained pajamas on and, you know, I just like rolled out of bed, which is half of my normal look. I realize that, um, you know, they're, they're not going to look at you weird. You're like, I'm willing to buy a million dollars with lights this year. Like, what can we do about this? That doesn't come off the same as like, oh, yeah, you look like you're here to do business. We're having a formal meeting. Uh, but I would like it to a point where I can just show up in the flip flops and, and uh, the aquarium co-op empire, whatever, speaks for itself of like, do good work. We'll sell your product. People will love it. We'll listen to the feedback. We'll make the changes. And everyone's happy. Let's do that. And uh, I'm as comfortable as it gets. <laughs> need gr need green co-op sweats and Murphy Crocs? Could be. I would never wear green sweats though, because let's be honest, when I'm wearing sweats, like I did a video with Bob and I was like, ah, oh, geez, wearing. I'm, most of the videos I'm wearing sweats now. I just don't care. But uh, yeah, they, my sweats get dirty when you're doing everything. You're moving houses. You're in the dirt, releasing koi and all that. Like I don't need to stain. I don't need stained sweats. Like I draw the line. Like let's try not to have it be stained at least, or, or too bad, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> the dude. Yeah, the dude. The dude's like the ultimate symbol of like not caring. I mean, I care enough. I don't want to embarrass my wife or anything, but. You know, I just want to be comfortable. That's all I care about is being comfortable. Like, and that's what I think everyone should strive for. Like when you're at home, when you're not at work, like if you don't have someone that tells you you have to do something, you should be able to, because for most of my life, it's been, you know, like, well, I don't want people to be like judging me and, you know, just think I'm a weirdo and all of that. And, and as I just get older, I'm like, what do I care what the grocery worker thinks or whoever is thinking? Like, I may never see them again. I know I'm a nice person. I'm going to wish them a have a nice day. All of that. What do I care? Uh-oh. Great minds are thinking alike. Oh, the big Lebowski of the Aquarium Hobby. Yeah. I just, I'm just into efficiency, low-key, what makes sense. Mon 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 Sometimes my brain doesn't work monetarily. Like... I don't know. I'm just trying to translate that to like every facet of my hobby of or my life really just ease. I don't need stress about anything. I don't need more stress about anything, I guess. <laughs> when I lost a bunch of weight, my ring would fall off, so I put on a few pounds so I wouldn't lose it. I like your style. See? Like what what is that meme? It's like clever times or modern times require modern solutions. Yeah, I, I just got to lose a bunch of weight so my ring falls off, and then I will strategically put it back on uh, via Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. <laughs> New test strips. I'm getting a weird chlorine reading on, on, wait, on outside tanks and tubs only. Huh, that is super strange. I don't know. This is where it needs, like, next-level NERM chemist to go, well, don't you know that... Uh, Pine needle sap will trigger a chlorine test or something? I have no idea. That's bizarre. I haven't run into that yet. But to be honest, maybe I'll test after the stream. I don't have the right test strips. I haven't got ammonia here. All my other test strips I brought up to uh, my new house. But I'll see if I can test that on some outdoor water and see if there's any kind of, you know, NERM conspiracy going on there. <laughs> I can see it now, like... <laughs> So we launch these green co-op sweats and then we all attend like an aquashella and the rest of the the aquarium scene is just like, what is wrong with these people? <laughs> oh man. Oh, it's gonna be glorious. Oh, geez. Less stress, less less mess in business and life. That's that's a good motto. That's I wish I had less mess. I I, I seriously like gotta hire a like a how a, I need a fish room keeper or a studio keeper or something like I I still have so part of the reason I got I got six diet coke cans I've been sitting here for three weeks because I moved my recycling bins to the new studio so I just gotta take them into the house but I can only take like a couple at a time and I was totally that gamer that had like a mountain of diet coke so I'd just be working and uh, yeah I need to figure out how to get a uh, studio helper that knows like, well, don't spray, don't be spraying Windex on the monitor or anything. Cause if that gets into a tank, we're going to kill everything. Like there's, there's all that kind of stuff to, um, uh Oh, hold on. 
Hold on. This is coming in. Coming in from the wife. Oh no. It says you're gonna want to check on Sass, so Sassy after the live stream. She has to go she has to go somewhere and we have an appointment. Um she got she got stuck all the way down in the net. Oh no, she started screaming. Oh no. So our bed right now looks like a toddler's bed. Uh I bought I don't know, they're like baby gate things that like you put on your, your bed and they can like flip up so that like a, a kid or a baby can't roll off a bed. So we got this king size bed and there's three baby gates all the way around it. And I bought one of them a little bit shorter because we have a ramp down. And between the bed and the gate, Sassy has gotten so blind now that sometimes she'll kind of like kind of fall into it. This is the first time she's ever kind of gotten stuck. So... I don't know what we're gonna do with her, like a baby proof and everything for her, so. Katie says she just put some extra pillows in the way, so hopefully she can't get there. But that's a lot of, so that's been a lot of why I haven't live streamed as much and uh, just been doing as much because we we still kind of just basically have Sassy on like 24 hour watch. I mean, at, at this point, literally my life has devolved into, I put the baby gate up while I'm sleeping in the bed because about a month ago, one night she crawled over my legs and she can't see and just sailed right off the edge of the bed. And it's like, I don't know, like three feet tall. And she, luckily, luckily she didn't break a leg or get hurt. She got stunned for a bit. We felt horrible. So now we literally sleep with the, the things up to uh, prevent that. And the new, the new house, we actually bought a bed that's much lower. We're still going to have to have the the baby things up and on it and everything. But if something was to happen like that, uh, the drop would be about 14 inches. So it means we're gonna be like getting up off the floor to get out of bed. Uh, but it also mean the ramp right now that's kind of steep. I mean, it's long, it's seven feet long. Like I've extended it as far as it'll go. Our room, I mean, our room at this point looks like, like a giant hamster cage or something. It's just like barriers for my little old lady dog and a long, <laughs> and a long uh, ramp. But it should be better for her. And my goal, I'm going to try to get it so the whole bottom of the bed is like one giant ramp that only has to go like two feet uh, diagonally down or something. So, yeah. But that's my life. Got to take care of the pets. And, uh, yeah, it, she, she, she wails and it just breaks your heart. So, yeah. We're on Sassy Watch 24-7. Do what we can. And I'll be really glad once we were moved. Like she, right now, she has to go to the new house, and we've got like a, a piece of furniture or something being delivered, and uh, you know, so it's someone's not with her right now. So that's that's you know, there's always that like guilt of like you got a special needs dog, and someone's always got to watch it. If I'm doing work or live streaming, it means Katie has to watch it, and so I try to take turns. And if I'm just doing office stuff, uh, I try to be in the bedroom with her, so I can keep an eye on her. And but then I'm on a laptop. And, and this might be an evolution, by the way, you know, just thinking about it right now is I might need to set up like right now I've got three monitors and there's cameras and all kind of crazy stuff. I might need to set up like a dual monitor system in, in the bedroom or we'll make another hangout area in the new house that can do that so that we can keep an eye on her because um, just as she gets older, it's unlikely she's going to get better. So, uh, you know, let's make sure that we uh, can keep an eye on her easily. And right now, and so we do hang out in the bedroom a lot because our couch is too tall. So we had to, we bought a couch. It was like $800. And it's only going to be like, I think it's like nine inches from the ground. Uh, but with COVID, unless we wanted it in the worst orange color you've ever seen, it's, it's eight or nine months out. And our current couch that worked forever, we had it for, you know, ever since we lived in this house. Sassy could go up and down the ramp and all of that for the last five years is fine. Uh, now she can't go up and down that ramp. So we have to lift her up or lift her down. And, uh, you know, if you're not paying attention, and, and that only happens like if you're like, oh, what's this? My doctor's on the phone. She'll like try to jump off. She'd get hurt. And so we got the super low couch. And once that shows up, for sure, it will make the sassy pad basically where, yep, you get to hang out. We bought an extra large, like deep couch. It basically bought a couch for dogs. I mean, in us, we're gonna sit on it too. Like it's, it'll be in front of our, uh, in front of our our TV. But it's gonna be ultra low. Anyone that visits is gonna think we're just super weird. Um, but then we don't have to spend time in the bedroom because if she goes down, like, 
you know, that far, she can just walk down um, where the bed, short of putting it on the actual ground, um, which I just didn't want to do. I felt like it would lead to mold or something. And it's got to be semi uh, hab habitable for us too, so. All right. So yeah, that's a sassy update. It's uh, getting old. Katie was just showing me a dog, a chihuahua that was made to 23, and I was like, what a sassy mix of 23. She's gonna be like, it's like another seven years. That'd be crazy. <clears throat> Ooh, the skinny pool noodles trick might work. We can get some of those at like the dollar store. I mean, it's already uh, changing the sheets. Like, I feel like we have to, because we have three dogs, we have to change the sheets like every four to seven days. It's already like an ordeal to work with these baby gate things and put the top sheet on there and everything. But yes, I think the pool noodles would probably fix it. So if Katie's still listening, maybe we'll make a run to the dollar store and try some pool noodles, not just for fish anymore. They could be used for doggies. <clears throat> Welcome, Crater. Do I think a bucket strainer can work for guppy fry or uh, it might overflow? Wait, hold on. Or it might overflow and they might escape. From, and what micron do I prefer? I prefer a pretty coarse micron. That's, that brings up a good point because a lot of people ask where to get that. And uh, I'm going to show you. I've seen them at hardware stores and that kind of stuff before, but on Amazon, you can get them. And I think the one I linked to one person was this one right here. It's actually a better design. It doesn't have the, the cutout part. But if I was buying it today, which I am gonna buy some more, I think actually, I might try the 600 micron. 200 micron is pretty fine still. 400 is gonna be a little more loose, but I bet you 600 micron it would still be like, I bet you this shirt is like 600 micron. So it's not gonna be like, my my fryer gonna get out of it. Like short of like rainbow fish fry or something. I don't think it'd be a problem. Uh, the other thing you need to know is uh, how to make one. Uh, if we go to YouTube, let me, let me, let me pull that up for you. Because we, there is a piece uh, that you, you put like a piece of this foam around the rim so it'll float. Um, let's see, I gotta go to my own channel and I gotta search. Let's try it here. I'm gonna try searching and we're gonna try fry tra trap maybe? I forget what we called it. Yeah. So we basically made, we made this one and it was out of a much coarser uh, plant basket. But the, the foam that you use in this is the exact same thing you just put under the ring of that. And you might have to use a little bit of silicone. But um, the foam is like, I don't know, like three bucks at a Home Depot or whatever. You can get the link in here. Well, I'm, I'm, let's see here. We scroll down. Doo -doo. Did we replace this? Wait, right here. Yeah, so this foam strip. Yeah, so even on Amazon, it's like three $3.48 now. Full disclosure, if you do click on that link, we'll get a cut of it. So that's advertising, know that. If you don't want me to get any money, don't click that link, search it up yourself. Um, but I have to say that legally, so we will make money if you click to that link. But if you just buy it, you know, if you just go to Amazon, type these in and buy it, get yourself set up. They're, they're really cool. I do use them for breeding as well. So I put, uh, I put in the, those floating, I wish I had another one here, I would have it on camera, but this is why, this is why it sucks to have two studios. <laughs> cause I could just run and grab it, but I can't cause it's, it's like an hour away. Anyway, um, I like to put the, the females in there with a little bit of like plants and then you can see the fry and then you go, oh great. And then you can just put the female back in the main, the main pond the way I'm doing it. But you can totally do it in a tank too. But that's why like, you know, like a 40 breeder gives you enough room to get some of these. They might make, I bet you if you, we search eBay and stuff, they probably make some smaller ones. I bet you they make them for like actual paint cans. Is that a thing? Let's go to eBay. eBay paint can strainer. Is that a thing? So yeah, this is what Dean and I do. We, we search the internet for just stuff that 
Like this thing right here could do it maybe. Like it's not quite the right thing, but like, huh, I wonder what that could do. These are all, these are all like, uh, like filter socks. So they're not gonna do what we wanna do, but I bet you, like here's something that's kind of getting, uh, acrylic pouring strainer, silicone. Okay, oh, that's for like, what are they, they call that artwork like, uh, I don't know. You just pour it on art and it looks cool. I did it once. Cause yeah, I tried to use a lot of strainers like that from like the dollar store, but they won't do the super fine fry, so. That's interesting. It's a can strainer. Strain your green beans. You're gonna feed your fish. There we go. See, that's that's pretty cool. But oh, it's only twelve bucks. So that thing, it's metal though. We want the plastic version of that. What do they call it though? Like a, a solids, a bucket solids strainer? Because I use them all the time. Like where I first saw them ever was. Uh, being used when they, when people would would uh, run their cars on like uh, like fryer oil. Why can't I? yeah? Here's some right here, but all right, okay. Here's this thing's kind of oh, this thing's kind of cool. It's a little bit of a, a mesh system, but that's not the worst thing I've seen. I wonder if we could use this with uh, the foam around it and like have it sit underneath a hang on back return to be a fine filter. Like if you need to polish a tank. So rust remover with bucket strainer. So yeah, there's that bucket strainer. Hmm. But I know if I spend enough time on here, there used to be tons. Maybe the uh, the bucket strainer game is drying up, so. But no, there you know a lot of that stuff. Most things in the aquarium hobby can be DIY'd. It's just sometimes you buy the stuff because it's easier, right? Like so, you know sometimes people will be like, "Man, you just sell. Who's gonna buy that like thirty dollars?" Like yeah, some people will. You could totally build your own. Like I just showed you guys how to build your own. You could totally buy as this thing that's already made though, because this will. You know, looks a little nicer, uh, fits in smaller tanks, like it's got that fine mesh, right? So this is just like a polished version of that thing that will also show you how to DIY and that we use ourselves. We I use both. I've got that in my, use that in my fish room. I use that other thing in my fish room. Just depends. I usually just have like some of all the things. I'm like, what one will work best for this situation? What about sifting pans? That might work too, yeah. Flower sifters. I use, yeah, I think I use a flower sifter as a duckweed remover thing. Katie always gets pissed <laughs> when I grab it. Like, hey, you're gonna need to buy another one of those? <laughs> I, and then I always justify like, I had to make a video, I had to get rid of the duckweed. What, you not want me to do my job? So order another one on Amazon. Uh, there are green funnel strainers for paint cans on Amazon that could work. All right, see? Now, you, here's what you guys got to do. You got to go, you got to make a better version of what we've come up with and post it on the forum, and then we'll all make one. Crowdsource this. Uh, let's see. I'm concerned about my male bed. I really think there's something wrong with him uh, mentally. Can fish be mentally challenged? Sure, just like any other pet. Yeah. I mean, it's a living thing. It could could have something wrong, could have received some trauma, could... You know, could have a parasite that's in its brain right now. Like, there's there's so many things that could be going on, and that's why I always laugh. It's like we we know so little about nature. It's 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 laughable. Like we think like, oh, I'm an expert aquarist. Like, okay, so you're king of the people that don't know anything about fish. Great. Like you're the number one guy. And if we know one one millionth of all the knowledge of fish, like, great. You're the best at knowing the least amount about nature. All right. That's why we all gotta help each other. No one knows everything. And we just gotta, even what we think we know, we don't know. And so we just gotta try our best. That's all you can do. If you think he's he's mentally disabled, try to find a way to accommodate him. That's all you can really do. Like there's not, I don't think there's gonna be much documentation on that. And so it's, you're gonna be pioneering it and maybe you'll be able to teach people somewhere else. Aquarium Co-op probably won't make paint strainers. They're difficult to ship. Which <clears throat> I, I feel extra guilty because I bet you, 
I bet you it costs like 40 cents to have a paint strainer made when you're making 10,000 of them. And then the shipping is going to be $12. So we're going to have to charge a lot to ship it out to you. I hot glued the foam to my baskets and it worked great. Nice. I tried way back in my career, I tried to use uh, hot glue to do that for Anubias. Didn't work. It lifted off of the terracotta pots and everything. It didn't kill the Anubias or anything, but it just didn't stay forever underwater. So maybe, because if you do it on the top layer, that stays out of the water. That makes sense. Might have to get me a glue gun. Ha <laughs> ha. For the Zis breeder box, is it okay to have both eggs and fry in there, or should I have separate trays and tanks? I'm worried. I'm worried about fouling the water with the fry food. Uh, I don't think you should necessarily worry about the fry food fouling the water, but at a certain point, they might like they might snack on the babies once they hatch out. So that's what I'd be worried about. Best case scenario, you'd separate them. In a pinch, though, I think all breeders have been in that. Like, let's see what happens. And the good news is when you're breeding fish, a lot of times if you screw it up, they're just going to do it again. You get another chance. Do you know, wait, do you know a feeder goldfish turns into a dark silverish color? I'm guessing you're asking, do you know why? Water parameters are fine, just happening to one of them. Most, most goldfish are going to change color wildly. Like they all start as black, then they can go brown, then they can go silver, then they can go gold, then they can go white. Like there's a lot of color variations uh, from fish just growing. So that's probably what's going on for you. Can you zip tie pool noodles to float the basket? You can. I just think it looks ghetto. Um, and by ghetto, I just mean, I realize I said that's in my vocabulary and I apologize because... I've been called out for that in the past. I just don't think it looks good. I think it physically takes up too much space and it draws a lot of attention. I like to keep myself looking as good as I can. Not that my stuff looks good, but that fine backer bar is just a more streamlined look. And the, the problem you can run into is um, like with those pool noodles, they come over the top. When you, if you have a glass top, that'll push it down a bit. And I don't like that. So you definitely want to keep it at least level with the, uh, the screen or the, the strainer. And so, I don't know. I, I, I feel like you buy one roll of that backer bar for three bucks and you'll have the next 25 projects done. He's eating and everything else is normal. It's just his new behavior. He's been in the tank with the same... Corridor. I mean, I'm guessing Corridor is for at least last year, and he just started acting like that last night. Could be, could be temperature change. Could be just he's bored. It's hard to know with bettas or any fish really. They could just, you know, do weird things. Study them, learn them. With mini ponds with white substrate. Wait, question regarding mini ponds. What white substrate would be ideal? None. Uh. Putting a substrate into a mini pond, if it's, it just ends up being a poop zone, even indoors. So my advice is if you don't have to have substrate, don't. If you have really acidic water, put some crushed coral in, but just a minuscule amount and then maybe throw a couple handfuls in every six months. It only makes things harder. Um, and white in general grows a lot of algae too. So even, it'll look white at the beginning, but then it's going to be a pain to... Pain to gravel back and just be an algae source. Let's see. Is there an email to send interest in funding co-op in Memphis, Tennessee? Is there email to send interest in funding co-op in Memphis, Tennessee? I mean, if you're asking if we need the money to start a co-op in Tennessee, no. To send into, unless you're talking about like an event, maybe? By then, just become a member. Like, all the member stuff, and like, we make enough money, we're paying all of our employees, and we all get to work at what we love, you know, with fish. So we're doing great. When, when I ask you guys to like buy stuff and uh, become members, mostly it's because one, I think we have the best products. Two, that money does feed in to let us do more stuff, but 
you know, some of you guys could could drop off and we'd still be able to do what we're going to do. But the more people that pitch in, the bigger and better things we can do. So, like, the money we make from this, we're just going to put, like, yeah, so you chime back in, uh, convention. Yeah, we're just going to put it back towards the the person we have to hire to run a convention. Put it back towards what are we going to give away at the convention. We got to book venues. We got to do different things, right? And so my honest... Uh, my honest advice here is we don't want you to just be like, look, I gave you two grand. You got to be in Memphis tomorrow. Instead, focus on like being a positive member in the community, uh, get more of your uh, Memphis locals to watch us and that kind of stuff. And uh, I mean, you certainly can. We're, we're going to bring on some more. Um, we're going to bring on some more benefits to memberships if you will like some different tiers so you might be like oh look at that i'm at the hundred dollar tier because it supports more uh more people that can't afford to be a nerm i get this benefit and i get this benefit oh and i get a free ticket into you know the nerm con or whatever it's going to be like we're, we're that's why i gotta i'm working on hiring someone i've already had meetings we had a two-hour meeting on what we wanted some of the stuff to look like we started thinking about when could we launch something like this what would it look like? How would we do it? We, I want it to be a smaller thing. My big thing is I want it to be like we all show up and we either rent out like a movie theater. That was this person's idea, rent out a movie theater or a wedding venue. And we basically want to eat. We want a couple, you know, a few speakers. We want to do like a swap type of thing where it's like maybe an auction or like I don't really want to raise the money because then it gets into like weird taxes for me. But some way in which you guys could bring fish, someone else brings fish, people are either bidding or trading or whatever. Maybe, or maybe use the local club so I don't have to get into the tax thing. Um, but like a, a like a supersized club event, basically. If you've never been to a club event, you won't really know. But um, that's that's what I'm looking for to do. Something like that. and And make it so we can repeat it and make it easy and make it fun. And my, my, the big thing I keep having is let's make it so that we fly out to the people instead of the people having to fly out to the event. And so how do we make it where it's smaller and we can do a bunch of them in a bunch of different states and maybe you only have to drive three hours to get there instead of having to fly there and maybe we make it just a one-day event so you don't have to book a whole weekend off. Like my thought was we pick like a Saturday – festivities start at three let's say you know like you and maybe there's like a, a pre-gaming lunch like hey we're all doing lunch at this barbecue place right and then there's starting at three we're gonna open up hangout room or something and then at five or six let's say it's six the first speaker at seven the second speaker um and then food you know, and then like there's another speaker after that. And then you guys can either stay at, you can stay at a hotel or you can drive home, whatever it is. We don't go super duper late. Like usually we'll probably be there till midnight, but stuff will be done so that people that have to work the next day or they brought kids or whatever can, can leave and uh, not feel like they're missing out, you know? So I, I want to make it just a much more accessible event, keep costs down both for people attending and us and make it so that like, great, we packed up, we went home. A month later, we did one in a different state. That's kind of what we're looking to try and pull off. Is there a way to stop my dovi pair from constantly spawning? They're going through a constant cycle of laying eggs and then eating a previous batch of fry over and over. Uh, try letting the water get cooler. Try keeping them down. You know, if you're keeping them at 78, try keeping them at like 72 or 70 or 68. As that water gets cooler, eventually they'll be out of, it'll be like, it's too cold to breed. We're not going to do that. Obviously, don't go way too cold and let them die or anything, but, you know, that natural seasonal progression is what triggers fish to spawn and stops them from trying to spawn. Okie dokie. Nerm Generations Kids Workshop. We've thought about some stuff like that. I don't want to bite off more than I can chew. There's, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff I'm not, never done and not good at yet, or maybe will ever be good at. So, but it, it could totally be like, Hey, how do we hire someone and put them in charge of, you know, n next NERMS or whatever the program is going to be called? Like there's a bunch of stuff we want to try and do. And my big thing is companies all the time, like we're going to do all this stuff and then they never do it. I am at my capacity. I can only do, I, I can do what I can do now. And so if I want to make something happen, I got to hire someone and go, look, your paycheck revolves around 
making sure this idea happens. You're exactly right. The Nerm, Fish Nerm Traveling Circus. I like that. I'm attending a convention online, the Northeast Council. Nice. Nice. I forgot they were doing online. I've never been to the NEC yet. I always tell myself I'm going to go. I've never been to the ALA yet. I'm a legendary member. I've never been. I su I've supported them quite a bit. They were raising money for... I can't even remember the cause anymore. I think it was something on the Amazon. We donated a fair bit and uh, became a legendary member, apparently. But I've, I've never been to one yet. Last couple times we had COVID, but then before that, I think it was on the 4th of July, which that's not good. So maybe one of these days I'll be able to go. Events and custom t-shirts. We've thought about that too. Almost like a like when a band goes on tour, you know, you could have like the the, the dates and the, the the cities or something. Like it's we just want to have a lot of fun with it. You know, that's that's my big thing is I, I just want to have fun. I want to show up in flip flops, you know, maybe we hit around the summer and just that's all I care about is making sure as much as possible everyone has a good time. I think the higher you set that bar and you're like, tickets are $80, a three-day event, blah, blah, blah. Like, the harder it is to reach that. And I'm like, if I set that bar at like, cool, there's a taco bar and it's 10 bucks to get in and I might show up, I could only exceed that. So that's what I'm shooting for. Shoot, shoot down here, come in up here. Is the co-op going to accept Dogecoin in the future? Probably not, no. It is such a headache. The biggest problem with that kind of stuff is like the way the platforms run and refunding. Like, oh, you paid in Bitcoin and refunding. It wants to refund the same Bitcoin, not what it's trading at the current time. So if it's up, people are angry. They're not getting as much back. If it's down, same problem, right? Like I should be getting more Bitcoins back. So we work in uh, American US dollars, make it easy. I, I, that, right? Easy. Easy green, easy that. That only adds another layer of complication to doing business. I want, like, the business is the thing that has to happen so that we can change the hobby, make products, do all that. I want to make that as easy as possible and focus on, oh, this is a hard problem to solve. That little bit of energy, put it over there on that hard problem to solve. Is there any fish I regret keeping? Um... I'm not sure there is. And the reason being, there's fish that are like definitely haven't worked out. But being that I get to educate so many people and I get to talk about my experience, even something that goes horribly wrong, I can use that to educate other people. Where, like, if I had never gone on YouTube, I'd probably regret keeping uh, iridescent sharks. Like, they just were never that happy, even in the biggest aquarium I could provide them. And so, but now that's given me such a good insight. Same with baller sharks, good insight. Like, look, even at a custom six foot by five foot aquarium, they're bouncing off the walls. It's not nearly even big enough. Like, it would be, I don't have an aquarium today, and I don't know that I could buy an aquarium today large enough to house these things responsibly. Ponds, sure, that's a different game. You could probably make that work, but in the numbers we sell them in aquarium shops, mm, not so much. The Nerminator. I was wondering if the corridors are knocking them off the glass or the rocks because they've been flying all over the place in the lid. I've lost a couple. I guess that's in reference to some snails. Hmm. I totally get it. I'm not a fan of my current job. If I was in Washington, I would throw my hat in the ring. Yeah, that's uh, that's honestly like my new motto is like, Let's just bring the people on that would give up everything to work at Aquarium Co-op and then go, great, you don't have to give up everything. We just want you to do the best you can possibly do and want to believe in you that you've done the best job you possibly could do, pay you as well as we can, and that's what's exciting. The you know One of the, the hires that we're working on right now, they're going to, if they come over, they're going to leave a great job to come work for us, and uh, I really think they'll be a great community manager, and so... We're working out all the details, and it, it's a slow process. A lot of times when I hire like a new role, a new section of the company, it takes months because it's like, well, what's this supposed to look like? What do we want to accomplish? Because 
the person that comes over, they're trying to figure out what they're getting into, right? You know, they want to know, like, what is it? What is it I'm responsible for? Like, well, it's an idea I haven't fully fleshed out yet. You got some ideas? Let's roll with it. <laughs> so it could be a little, little rocky at the beginning, but usually it works out. Will I be at Aquashella Orlando? I will not. Um, nope, I will not be there. I'm not doing any traveling yet for a multitude of reasons. Pick COVID. Pick, I don't even live in my own house I've owned for eight months yet. Pick... Still building the studio, behind on YouTube videos. Like there's so many reasons for me not to do anything extra at the moment that I'm definitely like trying trying to to just just stay on just keep my head above water at the moment. It's kinda of where I'm at. It's like, all right, just keep just keep doing the doggy paddle. I can get there. Can I stock a ten gallon with thirteen neons? Sure, you can do that. At least I could. I don't think it's unreasonable. Make sure it's cycled well. Maybe get some plants in there. Yeah. Any new tech that I'm excited for? YouTube or fish keeping? Uh, I'm really kind of excited to develop out the live stream. Right now, uh, I've been nerding out a lot, trying to go, what can I do to take it up another notch, basically? I want some remote cameras in the new studio. I want to, one of my biggest things, I want to do live streams outside. I've already started putting the infrastructure in so that we can have fast internet kind of down by my new pond. I don't know if like I have to, I'm using a, uh, like a system that basically it's like two satellite dishes that point at each other. Um, but I want to be able to do some live streams kind of outside because I love listening to nature. I love being in sun. Like when the actual sun's on me, I feel amazing. Uh, and I just think that'll make for a better live stream and I want to mix it up. That's really what it comes down to is just, you know, not the same desk, same lighting, same thing every time. Maybe it starts raining on me. Maybe a bird poops on me. Who knows? It'll add an element of surprise. And yeah, I'm, I'm really, you know, for tech, which I would, I would love, uh, I would love to talk about tech more, but I don't know if you guys would love it. I, I really like tech. Um, I've really fall, fallen in love with the Apple HomePods. They're like, too expensive, like three hundred some dollars, but the sound is amazing, and the fact that they pair up to a TV and my phone, it's really done well uh, for working in the fish room and listening to other people's videos and live streams. I've really enjoyed that, and so like, I I I, I highly I've been recommending them. I've got my little circle, right? I've got Jimmy, I've got Bob, I've got Dean, you know, maybe a couple others, and I highly recommend that. So I'm like, wow, I bought these, and I think they're amazing. Like, they're actually. Like two of them next to a TV because now they can go in stereo mode. It's really, it's really quite impressive. And I'm a guy that I want easy. You know, I'm never that guy like, oh man, look at all the speakers I got for my sound system for my TV. That's not me. I'm like, yeah, I bought this sound bar. It's 80 bucks. Uh, and this has that level of ease with like crazy good sound. So, you know, I'm, I'm into it. Uh, these new headphones, uh, I love them except my head is too big. So it's like, it kind of hurts the top of my head. And... You're supposed to be able to adjust them. Well, I've got as big as it goes. So I'm a little sad about that because these are $300 headphones. But I'm hoping they're just going to like, I don't know. I need to make it taller somehow. Maybe, oh yeah, I need to like, I need it to like bow up more. I got to figure that out or get some kind of thing. I need to look into Starlink. Yeah, I I signed up for the, the, the beta version of it, and I've got a buddy who can't get internet to his house at all. He's supposed to get it, so possibly. Right now, like, for the live stream and everything, uh, I mean, I'll just be honest. I spent ten grand. It was $10,000 to have a fiber line run I, in the, the city I'm in. I'm the first residential customer to have ever gotten fiber. So now I have 500 up and 500 down and the internet's $500 a month and it costs 10 grand to put the infrastructure in because luckily I was fairly close to a business that already had it. So I was gonna have to go all kinds of crazy. I was paying almost, I was paying almost $400 for uh, 100 down and eight megabytes up. This live stream you're watching right now takes more than eight, eight megabytes to, of upload speed. So it was like gonna be dang near impossible. So we're sitting in a pretty good spot right now. Uh, I'll expand that, uh, hopefully down by the pond or everything to make that work. And if not, we'll find another way. Like I, I do want, there are setups and ways you could do live streams anywhere of good quality, not just a phone quality. Like I'm not, 720p is just not good enough for people watching on TVs and monitors. And and I want I want people to be watched, be able to watch this forever. Not that 
it's the greatest content we've ever made, but you know, you can definitely see the quality and mostly it's audio difference. Like I really want like the picture is not even that important to me. Audio is super important, which, you know, I want to work on that more and just get it to be sounding even better. Do I have any underwater cameras for filming new ponds? I do have some GoPros. I haven't uh, gotten in the pond myself yet. I'm waiting for it to warm up. Bob ventured in a little bit, but it was so cold. Uh, but I, I do hope that I have a bunch of time this summer. I want to play around in that pond, clean it up. Um, there's some, you know, I want to get air going in it. There's a bunch of stuff I want to do to it. But, uh, you know, that, again, the Koi have kind of always been my my solo nerm thing. Like, I just do that. If Bob wants to film it, I'll probably let him film it. But I don't want to have to get Jimmy and turn into production and teach. I mean, I do teach, but I don't want to have to, like, show us a dedicated video on how to do that. Like, ah, it's not really my thing. I'm not an expert at this. This is what I'm doing as a hobbyist. So... Do I like to play video games? I do like to play some video games from time to time. I Right now I play super old video games, nostalgic. I play Legend of Kesmai, which I, I would honestly be surprised if anyone in the chat has played Legend of Kesmai. Um, it was way back in the day when you had to, uh, it was dial up. We were using Prodigy for our internet and uh, you had to pay by the hour. It was crazy expensive, so I didn't get to play that much as a kid, and now as an adult, it's kind of a turn-based game, so I can be writing emails, like, oh, yeah, I gotta take my turn, I'm doing stuff, like, it's super easy for me to play, and also run on, like, laptops, so if I'm, like, if I have to meet, meet with Randy and anyone's running late, like, oh, I could answer some emails, play that, like, oh, he's gonna be an hour late, like, all right, you know. All right. I mean, I did play a lot of WoW Classic, but it takes up too much of my time, you know, and I, there's so much more to do. Like when I, when I get my flip flop retirement, you better believe it. I'm, I'm rocking some flip flops playing world of Warcraft or something. So yes, those of you who don't know, uh, candy will be moving to Washington so that she can be on location. And I, I've, I haven't been tormenting her, but I've been tormenting or talking with the other employees. Like maybe we'll be able to get her on a live stream. She was on Katie Tropical's live stream once. Uh, we'll see. You know, I'm basically trying to just get more people we like around and more guests on the, the thing. You know, it'll, it'll be fun. So, yeah, she's moving here, which it'll just be easier to get her, you know, like right here, there's what's in the box. This has a test product right here. One of the things we've been working on, we're waiting on it. I haven't even opened it yet, but this is the latest thing I got to test, you know, so she'll be able to get. Uh, faster like we do send this stuff out after I've tested with it but now she could know what's coming down the pipeline even sooner so and we really want it so that she can raise customer service uh, issues that are widespread with us faster and in person like no, no no this thing right here like you see this right here this is all the picture right here they're saying this is broken and then we can you know work with manufacturers and stuff like that and it'll it'll just be one more level of customer service so we're looking forward to that Hopefully soon, if not yesterday. When are we opening a store in LA? Never. Never. I say never because it sounds like it's way too expensive there. Like, if I ever open another store, I'm looking for somewhere even cheaper. Like, it's got to have enough people to actually keep it open, but, you know, of all the places I could go, California is amazing because we've got a lot of people in California, but. I know there's got to be like, why don't you open it here? It's in California, tons of people, and not $4 billion. Oh, okay. I can't show what's in the box. Could be one. I, for all I know, I could have signed a, a non-disclosure agreement. I can get myself in trouble, for all I know. Yeah, ain't nobody want LA taxes. That's true. That's true. Prodigy, my screen name was Half Fast since I freshly busted up my knee. What was let's 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 play the embarrassing game. Alright. Islands of Kesmai? Ooh, Ariel. That's old school. That's before my time. That was the mud based version. Maybe I'll post afterwards, but you can still play Islands of Kesmai and Legends of Kesmai. It's still playable. It's kinda hard to do, but um now, everyone has to embarrass themselves this time. Everyone has to put what their first screen name was. So mine would have been on, I had I had a first email, 
and I had a first screen name on AOL. My first screen name, and I think this might have been. <laughs> I'm not. I can't remember. Katie would have to. Would have to. Uh, uh, certify this. My first AOL screen name was Twisted Halfling. <laughs> So I, I don't know if that's what I, I met Katie with. That's embarrassing. And then my first email address I ever had was uh, mashed potato fiend at msn.com. Long gone by now, but man, when you're when you're 12 or I was probably like 12 when I got my first online personas. <laughs> oh, I see. You say half fast quickly, half fast. Yeah, I see how that goes. Smeagol freak 89 that means you're born in 89 I always like I want to say oh I don't want to there's employees where I look at I I see something and I'm like wait you were born that soon ago like oh my gosh yeah <laughs> oh Everyone, does everyone remember remember when he had to type in like the ASL Age sex, age, sex, location? Who am I talking to? <laughs> oh, man. Bard's Tale was my OG game? I don't even know that game. Oh, my wife did confirm it. Twisted Halfling. How embarrassing. <laughs> oh, man. Yep, that's, that's the level nerd I am. I'm going to go around the internet. Call me Twisted Halfling. <laughs> What are some good killifish tank mates? Is it true they're aggressive towards other males? Most of them, yeah, uh, like Australs and Garden Rise, but like uh, Clown Killies, any of the really small ones that are more of a schooler, that doesn't apply. I'm not sure with tank mates. I pretty much only ever bred them and kept them solo. I bet you mid-sized tetras, like anything that doesn't fit in their mouth, they got a big mouth, so maybe like Serpe tetras and that kind of stuff. Um, but a lot of times, you want to breed them because they don't live that that long. Oh man, web TV was my first internet, huh? I did play a lot of EverQuest. I went from Legends of Kesmai to EverQuest, and all of my like high school was pretty much given up to EverQuest, which made me the nerd I am today. So, Ultima Online and AOL Connection. Back in the Ultima Online days, I played Magic the Gathering at the local card shop, but there'd be a bunch of nerds land partying it up with Ultima Online paying, I want to say it was like five bucks an hour, so it was crazy to me. I was like, how are you fools that rich? Because minimum wage back then was probably only like $7 or something. Neverwinter Nights. I never got into Neverwinter Nights. Altered Beast? I don't know that one. Doom? I played I played Doom. I had to go to a buddy's house because they had Doom and Wolfenstein. And I'd go after school and get to play like a little bit because we didn't have a computer yet. So back in the day, I feel like technology was a lot harder to get a hold of, so there's a lot of time where you'd watch someone else play a video game, and it was like just as good as playing it. Which I realize that's kind of like Twitch streams and everything now, but like you know, even if you weren't playing, just seeing what the new stuff was, because the game couldn't be spoiled and all that, so you just you wouldn't know what's in the next room and you'd die a lot. Yeah. All right. <laughs> My first screen name was Beanlet. No idea why. Nice to meet you, Beanlet. <laughs> oh. Minimum wage is still like seven dollars. Well, depending in, yeah, federally and in what state, you know. It, yeah. I don't pretend to know how every economy is going to work, but I, all I know is we start our people out twenty dollars now, which still isn't enough, but it's what I can afford. So. You know, people move up from there and uh, just try my best. Maybe if we have 10 billion NERMs, we could pay more. Even better. King's Quest. Before, what? let's see, before I played any games online, 
I remember we would go to either Alfie's Pizza or Izzy's Pizza, and I'm st I still kind of want to get one, but I want to get. Remember the four player Simpsons game? I played a lot of that. Uh, and then what? Well, it might have been Hero Quest was the other one. I can't remember exactly what the other one was, but it was a, a four person like RPG that you could play. But I'd only ever get like a dollar, and I was terrible at video games, so I would play for like seven minutes. But it was probably worth it to my my mom just to get rid of me for seven minutes. Yeah, made a fortune flipping magic cards. That was that was I. I used to be a dealer where I'd show up at basically the tournaments. One, I was pretty good in tournaments. Like at one point, I was forty seventh in the world for for basically legacy or vintage, um, and I qualified for the pro tour once, but I sold sold my spot because I was only 14 and my mom wouldn't let me go to Barcelona. <laughs> so I ended up selling it for like, I got all the cards and the cash prize and I won't say the guy's name, but he got to go even though I beat him. So I, I was pretty decent at magic. And so I traded a lot. That's how I funded a lot of things. And I ran, I actually ran a card store for a few years before, or uh, I guess that's why I was dating, dating Katie. So I met Katie my wife and then I had that job for a few years and I'd run tournaments and, and that kind of stuff and then from there I went into kind of the link care medical part and then eventually fish so that's where I met that's where I met my business partner though we played uh, magic cards together so the friendship went on from that long ago so before I ever even got into fish any of that and so I think that's part of why uh, my business partner kind of believed in me because he could see that I could run someone else's business at that point I also could memorize prices of cards and everything. And I was pretty good at that. I was very good at the game. Not that a game means business intelligence or anything, but uh, panned out pretty good. Gauntlet, that might've been the game. That Gauntlet might've been, is that what they called the four player? I don't know, I gotta get some more. I, I had the choice. I was either gonna make like an arcade with like old school games or a gym. And I made a, I'm making a gym. It's not made yet. I still gotta paint and do all that, but. I decided ping pong table, at least a little bit of exercise, and a gym. That's that's where I'm gonna go. That's that's the fun I got. <laughs> I look like I ran a card store. It's true. It's true. Yep. I when I when I ran the card store, I had to drive uh, an eighty five, maybe it was an eighty seven, an eighty seven uh, Mercury Topaz that like barely ran. That's right. No, I was not always a fish guy. People think I've been doing it for a million years. I I don't know how many years at this point, but it's probably only like 15 at this point. I just have a personality that I only kind of do one thing at a time. And so if I was playing a game, that's all I did. If I was with fish, that's all I did. And it makes it pretty hard because I can't maintain uh, like friendships or other curricular activities because it's like it's all or nothing on each of them so it's like nope done with that we're moving on nope done with that moving on and uh yeah but it allows me to ascend knowledge in an area of really quickly yeah definitely tournaments like if probably on my personal Facebook or something, or maybe I'll, I'll dig them up and I'll post in my, my new Instagram account where there's pictures of me holding like two or $300 that I've won. We used to, we used to travel around as a team and, uh, and win tournaments basically. And not that we won every tournament, but you know, kind of like people would, would travel around and play in counter-strike tournaments and stuff. We were just doing the same, you know, we traveled to Boise, Idaho, we traveled to Oregon, we travel to Montana, um, not too many actual flights because you wouldn't recoup the money from actually flying somewhere. But if you could drive there with a with a car full of nerds and sleep on someone's floor, and then you know if you're all pretty good and they split all the prize, you'd actually come away netting some money, and uh, it was fun. It was back before you know Star City Games tournament scene and all of that. So, but I I definitely played a lot of vintage, which was the original type of Magic, and uh, I always had a nemesis because in Washington that's where Magic the Gathering started. Uh, my nemesis was always uh, Randy Bueller, and he was a guy that was always on the R&D team. And for some reason, that guy just always had my number. I could beat so many other people, but every time I play him, I think I ever beat him once, maybe. But his his mind was uh, was a uh, it's beyond mine, I guess. 
and and the other thing too you forget to put it in perspective like maybe my 20 year old brain is wasn't as adapted as someone's brain who's like 45 or 50 maybe i don't know I, I mean that might be a thing i don't know i i'm that's probably just me making up for why why i'm bad <laughs> It's amazing the things we know about natural sciences. We only know ever know one percent. Yeah, there's that's what I love. I love going just to see nature and to see and huh. I wonder if that thing's even known to be a thing. Uh, curious to know as an employer how I handle a drug le legality with employees. Still le illegal here. Uh, we basically have it in our workers' handbooks and everything, and it basically states that you just can't be impaired while at work. You can't put any uh, um, any other worker or business at risk, basically, and that's kind of how we handle it because it's yeah, it safety. We just care about people, and it's it's a weird thing of like, I mean, I'm kind of a guy in most parts of business like if you can get your do job done done well it's safely and everything is fine then everything is fine if it's not it's not you know so i try to give as much leeway to people as i can because everyone's got a different situation everyone's got a different skill set everyone's got different maybe disabilities everyone's got different things going on you can have your best employee you know start going through a rough time because someone in the family is now going through chemo like there's so much that goes on in life that if you can show up to work and not be a hindrance to the business or your coworkers, and you're getting your work done just like everybody else, you know, that's that's fine with me, you know? There, I mean, I'm sure there's extreme examples where it's like, okay, that's not okay, like, I'm sure, but usually that's because it's affecting, you know? Like, if you were to come to work and you're you're drunk or something, like, that's that's going to affect people, right? But if, if uh, you know, if it's, what you need to function in life is what you need to function in life. Yeah, I figured it was like with alcohol. That's, I mean, that's kind of, you know, that's kind of how I, I treat it because I don't do any drugs or smoke. I don't even drink coffee, any of that, you know, so I don't, I don't, I don't even understand when people are like, I can't function, I don't have coffee yet. Like, oh, I gotta find coffee. Like, that doesn't even comprehend in my brain. But I know that X amount of the world like functions that way and i think it's weird and bizarre but then you watch those people like they, they do the ritual like i got my coffee and all right now i'm ready to do my work then they're ready to do their work and you know i don't i'm not smart enough to be to know you know what's the limit someone that's had 40 shots of espresso and coffee and they're just out of control like that's just as disruptive to work as someone you know doing something else that makes the pain go away right like they're like oh my back is killing me or oh you know, I don't know. I don't, I'm probably getting myself in a bunch of trouble. I don't know enough to know. I just know what our handbook says and what covers us. And, you know, don't, don't be a hindrance to anyone but yourself, basically. But don't hinder yourself because then you won't be able to do your work. I went to high school with Randy Bueller in Tennessee. Nice. And by the way, Vintage was the only tournaments that uh, Wizard, Wizards of the Coast employees could play in because they weren't sanctioned. So, um, yeah, that's why we only got to play them there. Why do I picture Elon Musk smoking me right now? I'd probably be, I, I would not know what to do. I've, I've never even tried marijuana. Yeah, I just... I, I don't like not being controlled my brain for any reason, pretty much. Um, so, yeah. Do you sometimes smell, wait, do you sometimes smell to yourself when you think about all your naysayers? Smell to myself. Never heard it put that way, but yeah, probably. I mean, it definitely gives you an impression when everyone just thinks you're, not everyone, but when when like the the pressure builds up, like you've done something wrong, that's not right. Like here we said, oh my gosh, this that. Like I don't think anyone can never let it get to them, but for the most part, I just try to separate myself of like, well, you know, for me, a, a good metric is: are people still buying my stuff? Are they still being members? Are they still participating? All of those, because I I do believe people should vote with their money. If you think I'm a horrible person, don't buy from me. 
don't participate, don't do any of those things, I'm okay with that. And that's the really the only way to get better as a, as a person when you get unbiased kind of feedback of like, look, huh, the result I want, I'm no longer getting. Something needs to change if I want to get that result. And so, um, and I just, I, I, I'm coming more and more to terms five years in that like, no matter what I do, I'm not going to be, um, I'm not going to be an audience for everyone. You know, I'm just, I'm not going to be that. Like I just, I, I understand that probably the majority of my audience will never like catch them all fishing. You know, uh, I don't understand it. He actually, to be honest, when I check in on his videos to still see if YouTube's letting him do his crazy crap, I will get like queasy to my stomach when I'm trying to watch this going, he just cooked a live iguana. He just, you know, he's killing these animals. He's doing this. Like I just, I'm so, so shocked in the way it's done. And now that like, I think there's like a video that came out that Bob showed me or something that it actually shows that it's all fake and staged where they're like, they tracked the snakes patterns and stuff where it was used in different people's videos under the guise of, we found them in the wild. We caught them. They're illegal. And we need to, uh, to kill them because they're invasive. It's like, there's one thing to like, uh, something being invasive and detrimental to the environment and it needs to be euthanized, right? There's another thing to the way this video is playing out and I don't know it to be factual, like it's someone else's research, so I could be completely wrong, so it's not fact. But if you were to go round up five snakes that are invasive and then loan them to someone to make a video and then loan them to another guy to make a video and instead of maybe uh, euthanizing them humanely, you shoot them with a bow and arrow, you stab them with a spear, you do all these crazy things, like that That no longer is, look at me, I'm out here taking care of invasive species, that's more like, yeah, let me borrow those snakes, I want to beat them up and get the YouTube views for them. Like that's not the same thing. Like I don't necessarily agree with, oh, that thing's wild, it shouldn't be here, so I'm going to try to blow it up with fireworks? Like, that's not right either. Like, I get it. If I was to find a fish in my pond or an invertebrate in my pond that uh, was illegal and that we had to take care of, I would do research to go, what is the most humane way to get rid of this? Now, I don't know. I'm not a reptile guy. I don't think it's shooting with a bow or a spear. My brain would go, I wonder if it's like hamsters where like you or rats you put them in a box you use co2 from like a co2 tank it displaces the air they just go to sleep and then they stop for all i know that wouldn't work on a snake i don't know but it it just uh the saddest part for me is that there are so many people that are encouraging it that really disturbs me of like i just don't see how it's different than other terrible things of like i just i I, I can get behind the people that maybe are like, yes, let's conserve nature. That's that uh, snake is eating all the gophers or whatever. Like I understand that aspect. I don't understand the aspect of like next time you should try to use like a machete or next time you should run over the car. Like let's do a crazier way to kill it. Like I just, I do not get that. And it, it, it honestly turns my stomach. And that's why I, I can only, I just only check in to go, is YouTube still allowing this? This is really deplorable to me. I just, yeah. And it's actually one of the reasons I'm not going to Florida because I just, I I think maybe some of them would show up at Aquashella or something like that. And I just, I don't even want to be around those kind of people. They just, you know, I've been accused of making an echo chamber on the internet before. And now I, I totally, I only want an echo chamber. I want other people that see that kind of stuff and I want to hang out with them. They go, yeah, I don't think that's right either. Like I just, I don't want to hang out next to the guy that's like, yeah, see if you can blow it up with dynamite. Yeah, see if you could do this. Like, I just, I don't get it. It's, it's so gross to me. And yeah, I, I don't, I don't know what to say. Like, I, I got so many harsh words that I just, I really don't approve of it. And it just really just makes me not feel right about it at all. And it, it makes me even wonder whether I should even be on YouTube anymore. Cause how long can that go on and YouTube not do anything to where it's like, at some point we're going to get looped in with them. And I, you know, we, we will do anything to try and 
do the opposite of that. Like, how do we, you know, I spend my days trying to take care of nature, teach you guys how, do, how can we do a better job? How can I get better instead of that? It's just, I don't know. Enough about that because it's bringing me down. I'm not enjoying that talk at all. So I'm sure it'll give me trouble with someone or whatever, but, you know, it's just, I don't know, it's sad. That's, that's really what it comes to. It's sad. It's sad that, like, man, it's a bunch of people that like this. They're sad that this kind of act garners this much attention that leads to this much money so that the person will keep up. They're like, they're the reward system. I guess that's what it is. There's like the reward system that's in place. There's enough people watching it. And I thought it was like people like at least yelling at them saying like, that's horrible. Don't do that. But there's so many people that are encouraging it. So that reward system is just, it makes me go, huh? I just thought we were better as humans. Like we don't need to glorify like putting something down. Like I, I literally don't even fish. I fished when I was 10 and 12. I really loved it, but I don't even have the stomach. And maybe I'm just a guy that, you know, is just too, too weak or whatever you want to call it. But I don't even like taking a hook out of a fish's mouth or anything at this point anymore. Like it just, cause I, I don't, if I had to feed my family, I totally get that's one thing and I would do it in a heartbeat. But, um, I just, and I'd still eat fish. I want to be hundred percent clear here that uh, I will pay and I eat fish all the time. So it's not that I wouldn't eat fish or that I believe it's wrong to ever have a fish killed or anything like that. And I realize that probably half the fish I buy is done not to the humane levels that I probably would think. And I don't know enough. I, I, I agree with all of that. But in front of me, I don't, I wouldn't want to do it. Just like I probably wouldn't want to kill any other animal. And I realize it's hypocritical. You'll eat it, but you won't kill it. I totally get it. Um, but that's just the, who I am. I don't enjoy it. I don't watch. I don't enjoy watching anything die. I've watched family members die. I've been in the room when they passed away. I've watched pets die. I've watched fish. I've watched all kinds of stuff die. And never once have I had any ounce of joy at all, ever. Like, it's the worst you can feel as a human, I think, when you watch that happen. All right. Got to move on. Is it possible to use a piece of acrylic for a center brace on a 55 gallon? I want to keep the top trim uh, as much as pop possible and, go, and not go rimless. I want to keep the top trim as much as possible and not go rimless. Uh, you could. The problem, when you bond glass to acrylic, it's hard to get use a special uh, silicone. You'd be much better off getting a glass shop to cut you a, a perfect piece of glass that's about, I want to say without looking up, like you got an eighth inch on each side, so you'll actually be able to fit silicone in between i would opt for that if you could um tanks used to be braced that way long ago so all right how do you drill the overflow holes in our rubbermaid tubs i think that's a i think we did it in a members video so you can check that out if you haven't yet but uh we use a normal like wood hole saw and it drills through really easy because it's just kind of a, a thick plastic. It's kind of like drilling an acrylic tank, also really easy. We set up a little jig so it would be in the same place every time. But if I was just doing like a few totes outside for like uh, uh, fish and stuff, I would just freehand it. By the way, uh, my brine shrimp pond is back alive. Didn't do anything all winter. Like it just made me brine shrimp, caught them, fed them to the fish, and then... It got cold, and now it finally warmed up enough that they're breeding and making the eggs hatched out, basically. And now there's, you know, brine shrimp that are about that big swim around. They'll start breeding soon. So now I can go multiple years with the brine shrimp pond. I kind of recommend everyone play with those. Pretty cool. Finding your videos changed my life. Keeping fish has helped me with PTSD and anxiety, and you have helped me turn it up to 11. That's good to hear. I... I, I I feel like I don't understand PTSD, or maybe no, maybe no one does, but um, because I haven't experienced it, I feel like when I meet people that have it, I can't comprehend it enough, and so I, I chalk it up to like I think I have to experience it to understand what that person is feeling. So I'm glad to hear that it's it's improving for you. The people that I know that struggle with it, they can have really hard times, and uh, you know I, I don't think I can. I mean, just as much as like, I feel like you watch someone have a broken arm, you're like, you know, that's super painful, but you still don't understand the level of pain or anything unless you've broken your arm or a leg or something. And I, I haven't, so I don't I haven't had like that kind of a, some, anything similar, so I don't understand it, but I respect it for sure. I'm glad to hear it's going better for you. 
when did I first play WoW and what was my favorite expansion to play? Uh, the first, I played Classic originally, like way back in the day because I was an uh, EverQuest nerd. Uh, and then my favorite expansion was uh, the Burning Crusade, I think, which I know that's coming coming out, like I think it's like any day now, but I don't want to lose like six months of my free time, what little I have. I basically lose free time and like live streams. Like I would be like, yeah, I could live stream or I could play video games. I'll play video games. So I don't want to lose the extra live streams. So I'll, I'll probably just stay away. Even though my my business partner will play, a lot of my model my buddies will play, Bob will play. I mean, it's it's too easy to get sucked back in and you know hang out with the guys. Could you do that in an outside tub, the brine trip? Yeah, I only do my brine trip outside. Um, I have a whole maybe I got to bump it up. There's a whole, I never made the video, I did a forum post about it, about my brine trip outside. What salt I used, how I did it, all of that. Uh, and like how it looked really bad at first and it got better and, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all for it because I don't like doing a whole lot of work as you might have heard in this stream. And the fact you set it up once and get brine shrimp forever, I'm on board. I need to make a trip to Stingray Biology. I don't know what that is, but sounds kind of cool. I'm not the biggest Stingray fan, but it's probably a ton to learn. <laughs> I need to start a whole line of books. <laughs> yeah. I, I do, I have considered like, could I do a, a Ghost Rider? Like, I know I don't have the time and the skill set to formulate like a, a well-written book and all of that and, and have it edited but I, I believe I could probably paraphrase like I could probably come up with a concept of like here's how you launch a fish store and like film 20 hours in a video and then have a ghostwriter go okay distill that knowledge into a book that someone would buy and be able to understand in the right chapters because a lot of it just like a live stream I'll go oh yeah just like we were talking about earlier I remember this extra thing and I could probably lay out just an insane amount of information and then have someone order it in the right thing because they're an academic and they know how people learn and that kind of thing. And then I would go back and proof and go, no, no, you can't be teaching them this. That always comes after finding their location to build a store. Like they don't need to know how to set up a, you know, a water change system. Like, yes, it's important that they'd have a floor drain and that's an asset, but not at the cost of 20% more rent. So I would still come back and get like that direction back in, but I don't think I'll ever just sit down and be like, all right, time to write the book about X. But then I also wonder if it just comes off like, look at this guy, didn't even write his own book. Now he's, now he's promoting his book, didn't even write it, what a fool. Yeah. Maybe I could just like, what is that, the foreword on the thing? Like, I'm so lazy and I'm wearing flip-flops right now that I didn't even write my own book, but I wanted my ideas to get onto paper, so I paid this person a big sum of money to make me sound articulate. Enjoy. Like, I probably just need that, right? Oh, man. A WoW Aquarium Co-op Guild? We, we definitely could, but there's that's the thing is, there's always drama. Like, there'd be drama, someone gets a piece of loot the other person didn't get, and no matter what I do outside of Aquarium Co-op, and even inside Aquarium Co-op, Whenever I have to be the bad person, people go, fine, I'm never ordering from you again. I didn't like you anyway. You know, it's like, really? Really? You posted a meme and it had a naked person on it and I told you to stop doing that and now I'm the bad guy, huh? You know, or whatever it is. It's one of those like, so I try to limit myself to interacting with people outside of my like business Corey so that if I have to be the bad guy, it's a justified reason. Whereas like, look, quit being dumb, you two. And then they're like, oh, look at this guy. So Dark Elf Necro and Human SK. Shadow Knights overpowered in EverQuest up until like, well, Plane of Power. They could start soloing quite a bit of stuff. We're go That's it. We're all playing EverQuest. We're going to Classic. We're only rolling Shadow Knights so we can harm touch all the dragons down. Let's do this. Well, we'll all listen on the live stream and I'll tell everyone to press one button at the same time. That's how we win. All right. Troll Shamans and WoW? Not as good, not as good as Troll Shamans and EverQuest. That's all I'm saying. I don't like doing a lot of work. That's true. I do work a lot. That, it, it does. Yeah, I, I see how that is counterproductive or co contradictory. 
I don't like doing a lot of work I don't like doing. Like, like this live stream right now doesn't feel like work. A live stream where I gotta be like, let's talk about tons of stuff about arowanas. I gotta put prep time in, I gotta do work, I gotta try hard, I gotta do a bunch of stuff. And so that is work where the same thing, like teach everything you need to know about opening a fish store. Like that's going to be an insane amount of work for me because I'll be so afraid I leave out critical tips that it's going to be hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. And so that becomes lots of work where this is like, eh, I forgot to say something. Ah, say it next week. It's fine. Candy's been on top of every comment. I've never seen her. She's A plus. Yeah. Candy, Candy has been uh, being a mod for like five plus years. Um, and that's, that's something I value. Like I, that came up in a, a meeting actually. And it was like, we just, I try to reward people that like show loyalty, lead by example. Like, I think it was Randy asked me like, how'd you even find Candy? And I was like, oh, she was a moderator on our live stream for like two years for free. And so naturally when we had enough money to bring on someone to manage something like that, like a customer service, she was the number one candidate for sure. Uh, back in the day, people have been hanging out for a long, long time. It used to be Candy and Nisi were in like every stream ever. Nisi, uh, I believe, got promoted at work and she still has, you know, big family life and all of that. And so she kind of went by the wayside, but Candy has been around a long time and uh seems to know everybody like if i ever have a question like who is it that's angry at me right now like what did we do on accident oh you live streamed during this other person you may have never heard of like ah well tell them i'm sorry and i'll try not to again so she's got the pulse on everything what headphones are these these are the steel series wireless pro make the top of my head hurts yeah, there's no ex no extra noggin room. I got too big of a noggin. I'm honestly considering going back to my old headphones, but they started they were getting real worn. You could see my you, you could see my dandruff that's in there and my little pads and everything. I wore them. I, I wear headphones like uh I don't know, maybe 10 hours a day at least. And so it actually starts to feel weird. It's kind of like when you wear a hat like I could have sounds coming on and stuff right now, which in the future I'm gonna have some sounds play, maybe even background music, I don't know, but like, uh, it feels weird, because now my, my voice sounds super loud, because it's not muffled behind this, and so a lot of times I'll be having meetings with people, I've just getting a, gotten accustomed to wearing this, or I'm you know playing a video game and working or whatever, and uh, these ones fit nice. I might just have to buy another pair of these and then figure out what to do with those other ones. The, the biggest uh, perk of these, they have one feature in which is to die for for me, and that is they can be simultaneously connected to your computer or Xbox or whatever, like your main thing you're doing, and they're also connected to my phone at the exact same time. So what does that mean, Corey? That means right now, if I was proofing a video for you guys, and I'm, okay, Jimmy, you gotta change this part. Okay, yeah, let's, let's, well, we need to add the link for that. I'm doing, I'm working. And I get a text message that my store is on fire. I have no idea. Or that Sassy is hurt, right? I, I don't get that. Where, when I wear these, every notification that goes through my phone, I hear and hear. I could also, uh, I could take a phone call and it auto, it auto mutes, or you can have it just take the level down. And so like gamers, what they use it for, if they're on an Xbox, they can be playing their Xbox and their phone is logged into Discord and now they're chatting with people on Discord um, and they're playing their video game. So it's, it's, it's got dual wireless capabilities, which you have to have a, a docking station. That's what this is right here. And because they're wireless, one of the problems with wireless is you eventually gotta plug them back in. Now with these bad boys, swappable batteries. Each battery lasts 10 hours. So basically I just swap the battery every day. It's got a charger that hangs out in here. Kind of a cool system. You can control volume right here. You can change uh, Bluetooth devices, all that kind of stuff. So it's everything I want, except not big enough for my giant melon, which is sad, real sad. 
Get some Sennheisers. Trust me, I've gone through a lot of headphones. I, I, just like a chair, right? I got my good chair, I love my chair. Like right here, what are these? These are some AKGs. These are decent when I'm on a plane. I think I have a set of bows around. But this is kind of the same problem with these guys. They don't go over your ear. So they're not big enough cups. And I got big noggin, big ears. And so these guys, they're they're good for um should I think they Oh yeah, they, they're good for traveling because they kind of go into a little case. So when I travel a lot, sometimes I'll I'll use these or I'll rock these, but they don't really fit your ears. They're great at noise canceling though. But same thing, kind of the wireless, and I work longer than most wireless headphones last, so you know. What's my hat size? Uh, seven and three quarters. Seven and three quarters for the giant melon I got. I remember one time I went into a lid store and they're like, uh, I told them my size, and they're like, we don't have a single hat here that will fit you. I was like, sweet. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah. I might have a, I don't think I have a pair of Sonys anymore. A lot of times, like I, I end up trying a lot of phone, a lot of tech stuff I try, and then when it's not what I want, I uh, like sell it off to an employee. Oh, I like these, I like these quite a bit too. So these are uh, bone conduction uh, headphones. So you can hear all the time because they don't go in your ear, they're on the outside of your ear and they kind of vibrate the sound. And this is really nice if I'm uh, like working with people. Or like let's say I have to be proofing videos or something and Jimmy was over there or um, like there's some other stuff going on in a meeting that I don't really 100% have to be into. I can be like, all right, I'm doing this, checking up on that stuff. Like, yeah, I'm still here. And you can still totally hear what's going on in the room. It's great for if you run, which I don't, but anything outside, it's really good for that. Um, and they pair with your phone or your computer and that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, I've got like two or three different pairs of these. Um, they, I kind of get the latest one each time they come out. They, they get a little bit better of a microphone because these are really minimal when I travel because I still have to jump on Zoom calls and stuff. Like, oh, Flubal's pissed. Like, oh, hold on. Listen, send us our crap. And then I'm, you know, back to work. So, yeah. Half the time I wear headphones, by the way, like, even if I don't have to, it's because I wear headphones all the time and then my hair gets all jacked up. But you fix that, you're like, watch this, stupid hair. Ah, less stupid hair. <laughs> I've got a garden to plant and a six mile run to do. Whew. Good luck, Jason. I wish I had the gumption to uh, even walk six miles. Am <laughs> I melancholy? I like that, BJ. Nice. It's been a month and all the plants I bought off you have new growth and have barely melted. Good. Glad to hear it. We're hoping to get more and more plants and we got a new farm. I think it might land this week. Open. You talked about wanting to interview Joey, the king of DIY. Is it a possibility that we may see you on his new podcast it's loose enough structurally where you can talk or you can really ask the hard questions i would say unlikely uh he did reach out i haven't had the time and uh i don't know i just don't think it'll work out like i just i can't forget all the stuff he said in the past about me you know it's one of those like yeah and you know i, I get that i'll be like oh you're just gonna be like that, huh? Like, yeah, I kind of just am. Like, there's only so many times you can make fun of someone's weight and teeth and things like that to huge followings where I'm like, you know, and there's been some other stuff. I'm not gonna call other stuff out because I'm not here to do that. Uh, but I just don't think it's a possibility at this point. As much as, as much as like, it might be a good thing for the community and all of that, I think the anxiety that I would have and stuff like that, that, yeah, I just wouldn't do it. I mean, you, you, I encourage you guys to watch other interviews with other creators and stuff like that. And, and, uh, but you know, it's, it's, I don't want to say I'm doing my own thing. Cause I collaborate with a bunch of people and I try to do a bunch of stuff, but I guess the, the most PR way to put this is we've got two different styles 
and I just don't think they, they mesh well. And so uh, I just don't see that happening. Sennheiser, I, I think I, I did some Sennheisers way back in the day. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not huge on, oh here, I guess I can show you guys the box. Cause they're, these are brand new, the, the other headphones are brand new, I've only had them for like three days. Uh, I'm not huge on like, this, just the, the music's gotta sound perfect. Like, I'm not really that guy. It's mostly, are they big enough for my ears? Do they make my ears sweat? Do they, uh, can, I, can I go wireless so that I'm in a meeting and like, oh, I gotta, I gotta grab something out of the next room or something. I, I kinda like that. Most times I actually just keep them wired up instead of being uh, anything else, so. What's the best classroom pet fish? I teach high school. Uh, I just helped someone with this in email recently. They were doing it for a library. And I kind of went over, you know, I used to run an aquarium maintenance business before I uh, opened my store. And mostly what I think people are looking for when you look at like schools, because we had some school accounts, we had retirement accounts. They want big fish. Uh, they like them to be colorful, right? And for what really works out well, would maybe it doesn't seem like it would, uh, it would be blood parrots. They got that color, they're pretty big, they keep smaller mouths so that we can keep some other small fish with them, that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, they, and like this person implemented that and he said, oh, everyone loved it, it's going great, they're easy to take care of. Like goldfish, they can be finicky sometimes. And people, somehow people go, mm, goldfish? Yeah, goldfish, those are those are beginner fish, but like blood parrots and other fish like, oh, this tank's amazing. So I, I really like blood parrots for a, a school or uh, like a public scenario. They also don't run very much. They're kind of boisterous. They'll come out and interact with people. So. All right. Bosmani rainbows? Yeah, Bosmani rainbows can work in... Um, can work in a school setting, but if they ever, like part of the problem is, so some other aspects in a school. Every year you end up either having to catch them out and take them home, or they gotta live like on an auto feeder or a janitor feeding them, and they gotta be real hardy kind of over the summer, and rainbows are a pain to catch. You gotta kind of make sure that food floats are really like in the middle of the water column quite a bit so they get fed really well. They also can out-compete other fish where the blood parrot, he'll eat off the ground. He likes to eat from the top. You can just do floating pellets and it's a, you know, it's set up a easy, like a, a feeder and just let it be that way for the summer and have someone clean it once up through the summer or something to be good. Uh, I enjoy my blood parrot. I would never have thought uh, to get one if they weren't for this channel. Yeah, I mean, I, I like them. Yeah, I'm disappointed that Joey did that. Yeah, it was it was all in like uh, like Instagram live streams that would only last for like 24 hours and that kind of stuff. And it it, it went on for I don't know a year or two. There there me uh, how do I say this? A lot of other fish creators don't get along with me. A lot do, right? But there's been enough instances of people think I'm copying them and that type of stuff, and I've been able to prove it in the past where it's like, like they thought, what was our, our logo was copied? I can't remember now. It was like H2O plants thought we copied something, and then we, we like showed the whole, it's a live stream out there somewhere. Like it's in the backlogs of like, we went, it was a real fish talk maybe. Yeah. Um, and I was like, here's the person I paid on Fiverr to make it, and here's how it went down. And it wasn't me just like, please make something like them. And then there was like a like a something with Dustin a couple of times, and there's been times like this like when that H2O thing plant went down, Dustin had Joey on the stream, and then they both just like, Yeah, that guy's, you know, garbage basically, and like all the, the stuff that comes with that. And then as I showed that it was not intentional at all, then it's like, oh well, let's just back off that again. And I think it's to the point where, you know, I've never had to doubt my own integrity because I know and the people around me know like the way I work. It's like, 
I'm not going to intentionally copy someone else. And when it happens, it's unintentional. You know, Rachel O'Leary at one point uh, said we copied the daily dose. And like, I never made a video about it, but it's like, oh, I did a daily dose years before she did a daily dose thing. Like, all right. And then there was uh, another thing we got called out on where we made a, a live stream called uh, Snails, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, or something like that. And it was similar to a title she had done in the past. And now if you, you search it up, there's like a bunch of people that have done that. I think Primetime Aquatics just did one, and I was like, ha, funny. Uh, you know, like, and now it's like, because what people, I think now, I think now people realize this is that there's a hundred YouTube fish videos that come out every day at this point. And uh, there's only so many word pairings you can even put together. Uh, let me see if I can even find those streams. Yeah, so here's, so like as an example, we're on YouTube here, there's this video, I assume it's a video, from four years ago from Rachel O'Leary and then at three three years ago, I did snails, the good, the bad, and the just plain useful. Um, you know, live streams have always been one of those things where it's like, just put a title on there. Like, it's so hard to come up with a new one every time. Then there's aquarium snails, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Like, that's missing the, the first part, but like, there's that. And I know there's like some other ones. I, I swear I saw them, but you know, it's that, it's that kind of stuff where it's like, okay, sure. Like, let, let's say for the sake of argument, I did copy it. I copied one title out of a thousand, and I didn't copy it. I know I didn't copy it because, yeah. Anyway, but it's that kind of stuff where it's like, look, you know, that combined with other stuff that I won't talk about is the reason why I don't work with some creators. I, You guys see I try and help a lot of people out, try to work with a lot of people, but not everything uh, has worked out. And, and, you know, think of it like a group of people not everyone's going to be friends like just because like go to work right because this is our work for all of us if you go to work are you friends with every single person you work with probably not you probably go like oh those three people yeah i kind of get along with those people hopefully they don't come into my office again you know and there's all the gossip and that stuff it's just work right so that's how that kind of goes all right yeah, a lot of influencers out there out there right now are doing the same topics. And it's lame. I don't see, I don't agree with that because YouTube encourages that. In the Creator Academy, they literally tell you, like, if other people are talking about stuff, you should too, because it's relevant for the audience. So, you know, it's you gotta remember this is like the entertainment business. And so, like, look at superhero movies right now. Hey, that works. Now everyone and their mom is launching a superhero movie, and everyone's watching them. So you kind of look at traditional media and you see what works and YouTube's like, yeah, let's do more of that. And you see it all the time on YouTube where it's like, uh, I don't, I don't know, like let's, let's swap credit cards for the day. And then like 40 different YouTubers do it because the people that want to watch the one, they typically want to watch the other ones. And then YouTube goes, great. Someone just watched 40 videos. So yeah, it's, you're, you're caught in this weird place of you want to be unique, but you also want to do what people want to watch. And uh, I just think there's always going to be overlap. There's there's no way you can keep like you can keep a, a track on every title that's ever been used or everything that's ever been used. You can kind of do a cursory search and try it and hope you find it. But like on a live stream, I, I guarantee you, I didn't. In no way did I. I did not. What did I name it? Fish Nerds United. I didn't put a single ounce of energy in going. Has anyone else named a title Fish Fish Nerds United? Never. I will. Like I just the live streams. They could be labeled anything for all I care at this point. Well, not you know, mostly forever. Like it was like a, back then, the game was different. You were trying to uh, do keywords, so you're like, okay, I need snails in the title. I'm gonna talk about snails, I guess. Uh, what else? So yeah. Drove an hour yesterday to shop at Jack Watley's Discus. Thanks for doing a tour there. Had a great time. Got some beautiful fish. Nice. Yeah, I want to go back there at some point. It was, it's hot in that. In that, I, I imagine it's really hot right now, but it's hot in that space. 
I would think that uh, uh, fish channels would get along well. Seems like a small community. Yeah, that's, I mean, you, you think that, but that would be saying like, well, everyone in your family should get along. You're a small group of people and you only have the most reason to love each other. Like personalities just clash. People live differently. It's just different, you know? And I think it's a better thing to talk about like, everyone can do their own thing. It's, it's fine. Yeah. Hard to know what's copying versus a trend. Yeah, I mean, that's... That's definitely true. It's uh yeah. I I've I I've always had the the mentality and I think I've shown on this channel of like people go, "Why do you give your secrets away in business?" Like I fully expect people to copy what I do. I'm spending my time on what am I doing next, right? And I think every person in business and career should be doing that. Like, yeah, you're going to be doing some stuff and if people are trying to catch up to what you're already doing, you should still always be so far ahead it will never matter. You know, it's when you stagnate that, you know, like if I stop innovating on Aquarium Co-op at all, it'll be within a year or two, someone will just overtake us in terms of like, they make better products, they have a better business model, they have a better blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it, it's that kind of stuff. And and so I focus on, well, what's my next thing? Okay, I'm going to build a big community. What's my next thing after that? I got to launch in Europe. What's my next thing after that? I, I got to have, have in-person events. What's my next thing after that? I don't know. I haven't thought of it yet. Like you always got to constantly be moving forward. You know, Joey went with podcasts. Great. You know, he's going to be doing that. You know, we, I tried real fish talk a while ago, you know, that kind of stuff. Like everyone's got to do things that make sense in their life. Right. Um, so I, I say more power to him. Like Rachel does a lot of stuff in our greenhouse. That's great. You know, lots of, you know, ways to learn about plants, that kind of stuff. It's not my thing, but if I was into it, I would totally be watching it. I think it's good for everyone to just, diversify, take people like, I talked about headphones today. I'm talking about other nerdy crap. That's, that's what I'm into. My old boss used to say it's easier to copy than create. That might be true. I don't know. I find it, it's easier on YouTube to just be genuine. If you're genuine, it's a lot easier to film and everything. Now, whether you get the results you want, that's, you know, but if it's, if it's, Make a video about anything I want in my fish room for 20 minutes or make a video about uh, Costia, the disease. That The disease video is way harder to make than something I'm already passionate I like. So. If you have to trash someone to succeed, I would rather fail. I, see, well, I would, I would say this. I don't believe that, uh, like... Let me, let me make sure I'm saying that right. I don't think anyone was like trashing me to try and get ahead or anything. I think that's just their personalities of like they call it like they see it. And I, I don't fault people for that. I mean, it's, it is what it is. Like there's just some people that like, I'm going to say what I think all the time. Like, that's fine. You know, that's, 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 that's who you are. I don't think like, like with Joey, I don't think he would do it. Like he had nothing to gain from it. Right? Like he was already way ahead. He's still way ahead. So he's got, he had nothing to gain from. I just think he genuinely is a guy that will say what he thinks for right or wrong. He's gotten himself in trouble t times before, right? Um, but there's a lot of people who love him for that too. Like they straight shooter, you get what you get. Am I ever going to hire people to work in my fish farm? Uh, I don't, th not many. Like I think the max would be about one. And that would be kind of someone to help maybe clean up. Or maybe, like, the position I could think of would be your, like, they help clean up, maybe clean some tanks. When I have to travel, maybe they come in and feed, you know, because, like, Katie could feed Ladybird, but she might not know, like, well, what specifically does the eel have to eat? What is this thing going to have to eat? What about this? How much do they eat? This is happening. Those fry need to eat this. Who's hatching the brine shrimp out? So it could be that rule. But I, I really don't, like, I, I kind of like... Uh, having that space to myself. So, yeah, I mean, even though people come in and they work, like we have meetings and all that kind of stuff, I just, I like to kind of dirtle around in my aquarium or my aquariums uh, um, by myself a lot of times. <laughs> I keep skipping your question. I'm, I'm probably skipping lots of people's questions. No one in particular is. I'm sc I scrolled up a little bit and it's not popping out at me. It's so hard. 
and you donated five dollars like oh right here maybe here it is help me with my nitrates my nitrate cycle imploded i'm doing everything thatch and brandon and Jaden told me to do even doing water changes we do a sponge filter uh i would say i don't know enough you could post on the forum but have you watched like i need more info to really be able to help but have you watched like cycling with a planet tank first and foremost whenever people are having problems with cycle i just say stop feeding and they're like but my fish are hungry like if you don't feed them for a month they're still going to be there and you won't have uh you won't have ammonia so i would say just cut back on the food like maybe you feed once a week and then next week or in two weeks you feed twice a week and in three weeks you feed three times a week and so you change your water because that's all it is food goes in ammonia happens you got to change water you're much better off changing a lot less water like get it down till it's really low change like no water feed test that day the next day okay it stayed low okay wait till it goes all the way down when it hits zero again feed a little more right you keep doing that until all of a sudden oh, i can feed every day it's handling it that's you're, you're in a big long game of that and it's usually a new fish keeper worried about fish versus mother nature going just let it be it'll do what it does and so you're trying to thread that needle of like but if i if if i do what it does and it dies i'm gonna feel horrible like yes but at the same time if you do it, try to do everything it's going to be so much that uh uh it does as much damage so pizza bones that's right I haven't had any pizza i've been i've been mostly eating on like a low carb diet i've been doing essentially keto really I'm losing some weight but the weight is the after effect i feel amazing like uh just had a lot of energy so which is good i'm enjoying it hmm It's impossible to create in a vacuum. We're all influenced by what we experience with aquariums. We experience the same things and thus natural ideas happen. I think to some extent that's true. You know, it's uh, when, when you have multiple people making, you know, make a thousand titles for something and then have another person make a thousand titles and then compare the two and see how many were like, oh, that's similar. Like eventually you're just like, I can't not. And, and then you also like now, Today, if you make a video, I think it would be impossible to kind of have an aquarium-related title that someone else already hasn't done. Like, there's thousands of fish YouTubers from, they have one subscriber to millions of subscribers, right? And they've all made thousands of videos at this point. It would be impossible. So now it's just like, I, I really recommend just do what you got to do. If you got a live stream at Friday and you got to go over live, over top of LR Brett's, then do that. Like... People will choose where they want to go, what they want to see, all of that. And, you know, two people can make a cheeseburger. That might mean you eat at that place once, you eat at that place once, because they're still slightly different. Oh, that one's flame broiled. That one's not. That one's fresh. This one's that. Like, let the, let the people decide, I suppose. <laughs> do I plank? I do have to plank. It's horrible. I hate it. I still go to my trainer twice a week and I just try to make it as brutal as I can on myself twice a week for 90 minutes. And uh, I've gotten I've gotten a lot stronger. Like I'm going to be a madman in Peru. I keep having to buy uh, like heavier kettlebells and slam balls. Like we need a slam ball that's more than 50 pounds. Um, I mean, I'm not like, don't get me wrong. I'm not the rock or anything like that. I'm just saying compared to the, the human I was two years ago, it was pathetic and uh, I've just been taking my own health uh, I would say more serious not that I, I always valued it so it's not like I was like totally neglecting it um, but I'm letting it get in front of work basically now it's like there's nothing more important than Corey going to work out at this point because if I let work get in front of it I'll never do it and so focusing on it oh it's a that's right. Get over on me, huh? Yeah, I did. I did live stream that to be honest. I live streamed once on a Friday night and it was over top of Lucas and I felt horrible about it and I apologized. And then like, but since I was like, how can you, uh, how can you 
really enjoy what you're doing and like go live in the moment when you want to. And then, so I tried to look cause like there's YouTubers that keep a schedule of all the live streams. And I literally was looking, I was like, to not go over anyone, I gotta do it like before 6 a.m. in the morning or after midnight. Cause every day there's so many YouTubers that they've slotted up like every slot. And I was like, this is impossible. There's no way you can, you know, it, it would be like trying to go, well, don't keep your store open the same hours as your competing stores. It's like, well, no, 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 people just choose what store they want to go to. And so that's, you know, uh, there, there definitely is a little bit of like, I'm not gonna go like try to make, oh, Corey goes live every time Lucas Press goes live. Like, I'm not trying to do that, but I'm not saying I would never, like, what if I'm, at Gary's Lang, Gary Lang's house again, and it's Friday night. Like I'm gonna go live because I that's the only time I can go. So, have you ever considered a franchise expansion? I have. Uh, I don't want our name associated with stuff we can't control. That's what it comes down to. Is I I think it's easier that if you're a business that would operate on the same principles that Aquarium Co-op does. It'll be real easy, um, real easy to endorse them and go, hey, we like this, buy from them. They're like Aquarium Co-op. But it's also easier to keep reviews different. Like what if they have a, a no return policy ever? And then because, well, like the, the local branch does there and now it's affecting all of our reviews and that kind of stuff, right? So I am doing more. I'm gonna try to work with a fish store that um, ooh, do I have any? Oh, I don't have a way I could show the pictures. They sent me some pictures. They're getting some paint up on the walls, that kind of stuff. And uh, um, I'm going to try and support them, people I like, and I want to see them do well. And uh, I'm going to do what I can for them. But I don't want to put my name on it because at the end of the day, when things get tough, people make decisions differently. You know, like, oh, my kid has to go to college, or oh, I'm going to lose my house, or you know, or anything like, or money's really good. And so now I, I'm not there anymore. Like what if you make a ton of money and now you're not at the store and your employees are running into the ground. Right. And there's all this oversight that I would have to do to prevent that. And I don't want that extra layer of, of work. How many goats could I carry? Uh, not very well. If are they pygmy goats? <laughs> I had to, I had to do a farmer's carry on my birthday. Uh, and since I'm 38, I had to do 38 laps and I think it was, what did I have to do? I had to do like, it was, an, it was a, what do they call it? They call it a, maybe it's just a, uni, no, not, yeah, yeah, maybe unilateral load carry. I think I had to have 25 pound kettlebell above my head and then like the 60 pounder on the lower hand and every lap you had to rotate. Dang near killed me. Like my hand, like the muscles of my hand were actually like, like I had hurt them after that. Um, but yes, I, I focus very much on, uh, functional training so that it is like carrying a goat over a log in Peru or camera equipment or all of that kind of stuff. Um, like there's the latest torture for me is what are they? Basically there's just pods that light up and they light up in a random order, you know, think of that game like Simon or whatever, and you space them out like, uh, you know, 12 feet or something. And uh, basically the light goes off, you have to go do a burpee at that one, hop back up, do a burpee at the next one, and you do that 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, 30 seconds on, you do that kind of stuff. And so it's stuff like that, you trip in the mud in Peru and you gotta get back up, you know, and pull yourself onto boats and, and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's really functional, balance related, um, that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's good for me. And it'll, it'll make it better when I'm doing, um, you know, filming for you guys and doing content and, and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it, it, it's, it actually is dangerous at some of the places we go. You know, we've had to hire bodyguards before in the jungle. You break an ankle, people got, you got to carry them out. There's not just like, you don't just call it up and be like, oh, the ambulance will be here. Like, you have to carry it back to a boat. The person's going to be in a lot of pain. You're not going to have supplies. You got to take the boat somewhere. Then you got to get them into maybe a rickshaw type vehicle, get them to a hospital that might not be the best. And so anything you can do, um, and you know, we're trying to plan the Papua New Guinea uh, expedition and 
it's going to be very dangerous. There's gangs, and you know, you, you don't like the gangs are in the city, so you can't be in the city, and and all that. And just the further you get away from nature, or not from nature, from civilization, the more dangerous exponentially it comes. And so, the better things I can do, I can tighten up muscles. I can, you know, make sure that fatigue is not going to make it so that uh, I'm having a problem. And that's why I do 90 minute things because. It's it. I don't think it does as much for me if I'm like, yeah, I do 40 minutes a day. Whereas the days you're on expedition, it's long, long, long hours. And so trying to go longer. And so like I wear, uh, what is it, the Apple wristwatch band? And basically the heart rate that that thing tracks, the, the goal we have is always keep it above 160. So if it drops behind, like let's say I go really hard, it hits like 185 and I'm dying. I can rest until it hits 160, which is like 30 seconds, and it's back to dying. And we do that for like half an hour, or not half an uh, hour and a half. And so the hope is super sweaty, hot walks, you're wet, your feet, there's gravel in the shoes, like you're getting stinging nettles and just like brambles, and you took a stick to the eye and all of that over the course of a long period of time doesn't seem so bad anymore because you know what your limit can be. So, so yes, carry the goats. Anyone here familiar with the Zis Egg Tumbler? Uh, Randy's really familiar. He uses it all the time. I, I rarely use it. I use, uh, I usually put stuff in a net and just put an air stone below it and it kind of tumbles it. Yeah, I want to be strong in a practical situation. Trainer, carry these goats. Someday I think I actually will probably do uh, some kind of stream with my trainer or, you know, just give you a glimpse of what I go into. I, I impress myself. That's all I'm saying. Like, I'm a 300-pound dude that is pretty darn capable. Like, I don't deny that I am overweight, but I am – I'm proud of what I've achieved, and I owe it pretty much all to my trainer. Like, he has been able to take me from a guy that was just a 300-pound guy that – you know, was okay to like, wow, I'm actually impressed that I can do Bulgarian squats and I'm, you know, like doing stuff under weight and, and, uh, just doing all kinds of moves that my body was never used to doing and kind of seemed impossible. So I'm happy. I know we are on track for the three hour stream. I thought, I thought about maybe going to, uh, three hours and I gotta go check on Sassy soon. So I'll probably end it. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Don't let Chris send me into the cave. Yeah, Chris and I have been talking quite a bit, and uh, we're hoping I get my second vaccine. Uh, I think he's going through another round of, like, lockdowns in Germany right now, but we're going to start planning some stuff, and, uh, you know, still, I still got to get moved. That's above everything else. Got to get moved. Got to get things stable, you know, so that I can uh, I can get out there. That's That's what it comes down to. <laughs> my trainer's got to start poking with sticks he, he would he would I, he, no doubt he would if I asked him to I mean I basically told him I was like don't let me leave here without hating life because I'm you know a lot of people that there's there's basically like two clients for a trainer there's some that basically want to pay the fee and kind of get through it and then be able to say like I have a personal trainer right and then there's me where it's like look I'm paying you you need to make sure I want to die every time I leave here, which sucks for me. But that's how I feel like I'm getting my money's worth of like, all right. And he's really good at riding the line. And we've had to work through things of like making sure I eat enough before I work out. Uh, when I get back, because I've been working with him for like two years at this point. When I get back from uh, flights, like in trips, I'm so exhausted from like an Aquashella that I cannot, I cannot work out the same way. You know, because I work out like Mondays and Wednesdays or whatever, but um, Mondays I'm back, back to work, right? So it's like, okay, I got to work out. And if I was in Chicago at Aquatic Springs all weekend doing all that crazy stuff, then I get back, it's like, oh, this is ridiculously brutal. But that's exactly how it'll be in Peru, you know? And, and that's where it started. It started out, I was training with him to get ready to go to Peru the first, not the first time, the second time. And I just, outside of COVID, uh, I just kept doing it, you know, so we had to take a break for a while, but after that, then, then we did it. 
I got mine yesterday. My arm's killing me. Sweatpants for sure. Luckily, my first shot didn't affect me at all. Katie fell a little under the weather, but not nothing crazy. Yeah, I have to get I have to get vaccines and shots all the time. When I'm traveling around the world, I always like, oh, what do I gotta get? All those crazy things exist there. All right, let's go do that. Uh, depending on where I go, and so you know, you gotta prove you you're vaccinated to stuff, and uh, yeah, different countries, different things. You never know. Oh, that bug, that bug will straight murder you. Like, oh, is there something I can do about that? Yeah, you do this. Okay. New video today? Nope. Uh, I decided to stream uh, Sundays for now. I might release a video next Sunday. What basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to looking at YouTube stats, seeing like. How often can you guys watch a video collectively on a Friday versus a Sunday and live streaming and that kind of stuff. So I'm playing around with the times and just trying to see what the data tells me. And uh, yeah, can I cuss at my trainer? Oh yes, definitely could cuss at him. He, my my trainer's smart though. It's like, like oh, you're late today. That's a paddling. Like you're gonna you're gonna have to you're gonna pay for that. You know, I mean, he's also really good too. If you're like, man, that thing is ridiculously hard. Like that actually is like, I'm close. I think I might hurt myself with that. Then it's like, okay, we have a good relationship going after a couple of years. Any chance at a taller easy planter? I want one with a bit more height. I had never considered that. Hmm. I don't know. I, I, I it seems unlikely to me. I'm not saying impossible. It seems unlikely. Yeah, I feel like puking is a great workout. That's kind of like if I don't have to sit in the car and be like, oh my gosh, that was ridiculous. Before I start driving, then I'm like, I, I had more to give. I really try. My my I trick my brain and if I give 110% on the two workouts, it makes up for me being a desk jockey basically for the rest of time of like working out. So, and it doesn't, it's not a one, one, one to one, but that's how I trick myself into like push harder, push harder, push harder. You know, my work ethic is pretty strong. So like on the last sets of things, I try to beat anything I could do before it, you know, so if I could do four sets of 10 or let, let's say it's four rounds of 30 seconds of like slamming a ball, right? The first three rounds I can get to 11, the fourth round I have to get to 12. Like, if I don't put everything I can into it, I didn't try hard enough. So it's like I have to get to 12, and I'll be dying. But that's just the, you know, it proves to me that I can still do it. Like, all right, I could do 12. But someday I'm going to be getting 12, and I'm going to push for 13 in these 30 seconds. That type of stuff. And, uh, yeah, it keeps it. It's fun, and I know it's going to be good for my health long term. Taller planters. Yeah. If you I mean you could build up the substrate and stuff they're gonna get harder and harder to ship the more tall they become though i've also been drinking a ton of water lately all right is there a fish dean can't breed so far it's been the shodeni puffers he hasn't raised the fry yet there's something else too he told me but i can't remember but most people can breed most fish if uh, you put enough time and attention to it. Most of us, our attention spans get bored and we move on because like, oh, I could do that. That's easier. So I do like fish that are hard to breed, even if it's just only hard for you to breed because you feel so accomplished after you've done it. And I think a lot of breeders, they like that too, where it's like, I'll get it. Oh, I'll get it. Like there's been stuff Dean's played with. It makes no financial sense. Like, no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Can't let it beat me. Uh, do I know why my crib eggs seem to be clear and maybe empty kind of like an egg yolk looking thing how are you seeing the crib eggs they should be deep in a cave I, I don't normally don't see them so I'm not even sure what color they are most times like a pistol I think are pink most times is zebra plecos? Dean's bred them. He's they're they're definitely a challenge. Uh, but he he has fry. He ended up losing them all to a heater malfunction when he's out of town again. That happened to him twice now after over like five years. Corey, I'm going to do anything for a ten year anniversary. 
I don't know. I, 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 I like to believe that we adhere to this like better thing of like, we don't run sales because we try to give you the best price all the time. And like the same thing, like, are you gonna do something big for your 10 year anniversary? It's like, well, I could maybe, but I should just be trying harder before then. Like I try to try to do like, we're trying to do everything we can. We don't have time or money or resources. If I got, if I basically, if I can, like, let's say I had a hundred thousand dollars laying around to put on a 10 year anniversary event. That would be amazing. I feel like I should have invested that into new products, more live stream stuff, better member benefits, more more outreach, charity, all of that. Like I shouldn't let it build up. That's kind of the way we feel. It's like we like the public has given this money, let's spend it in a way that will give back in a roundabout way. And I, I do believe products give back in a roundabout way because we always try to make something easier or more affordable, or we always try to make it better in some way. Um and I just, I don't really like, like, I don't even, I didn't celebrate my birthday. I just don't do that. To me, it's like, just keep doing, I'd rather, instead of like a culmination, let's just like, instead of a graph going, doing this, I want it to just be like, okay, if it was here, let's just make it a tiny little bit better all the time. Tiny little better all the time. Much better than better once. I'll probably do a live stream. That's probably true, but I'll probably be live streaming. I'll probably still be live streaming then anyway. Welcome, Alexander. Speaking of which, I gotta I gotta shut this thing down. But how many nerms did we get today? I gotta find the nerm meter. We started at two thousand two hundred ninety nine. We are now up to two thousand three hundred thirty six. Does that mean we get thirty seven in a live stream? Boom! That's good. Uh, last last thing before I hop off, if you're just hearing this, if you'd like to get notifications when I go live or release a video, go ahead and check out the description, put your phone number in there, and we'll text you when such an event happens. We got a good response that it went through just fine, and uh, hopefully that'll make up for YouTube's lack of notification system, and uh, yeah. Test trips coming to Canada? I literally, if I could show you my private messenger, I literally sent that to uh, Randy yesterday. Randy's gonna be out of town all week because he's visiting uh, plant farms and extreme and stuff. But I was like, test trips gotta be like the next thing we put on Amazon Canada. So Amazon Canada, there's like really uh, like, I mean, let me see if I can bring it up real quick. Because I, I want to justify, like, my broken record, right? Oh, come on. Where is... Oh, that's the wrong channel. That's why. Hold on. So here you go, I searched Amazon limiting new products. These are all these threads of people talking about have they changed the inventory limits. So like right now, we try to submit something, they're like, no, you can't even launch a new product. And then with our Easy Green, they're limiting us to 200 bottles at a time. We sell more than 200 bottles in a month. So that's why we keep running out of stock for the Canadian customers. And until we find a, a different partnership in, uh, in Canada and in other countries, we're just, that's the easiest thing of like, yeah, we can send it there, people can order it, great, that'll work. But they're limiting it uh, with new products. Basically, when the pandemic hit, retail shut down, right? So everyone jumped online and Amazon is swamped at the warehouses for storage space. So they're limiting everything. So if it's a new product, which Easy Green was a new product, and so is Easy Iron, and so will the root tabs, and so will the uh, test strips and that kind of stuff. They're only letting us send 200 of it. The biggest problem, the biggest problem is if I only send, like let's say I gotta send this Easy Green, right? And I send 200 of these. There's lots of fees of like, oh, well, just to import, that's $80. Where if I send 8,000 of these, it's also $80. So we're losing money just trying to keep things in stock on Amazon right now, which, uh, you know, sucks. <laughs> 
but we're doing it and we're like we know it's only a matter of time before they open the floodgates we can get our products there you guys will get what you want hopefully everybody's happy uh we're trying really hard i just i feel bad because what has it been like it's, it's well it's been over a year covid's been over a year like for over a year i'm like we're trying and i feel like if you just say you're trying to do something for a long time people stop believing that you're actually trying but i promise you i try i have a meeting every week about what's the latest how do we get around this how do we make this work what's the infrastructure who do we need to hire what, what's the tax implication what's going on and uh, so I, I really do want to launch stuff, more stuff for you in Canada and the rest of the world. We're, I'm, I'm honestly trying, uh, not just like, you know, he's trying. I'm, I'm, I put work towards it every week of trying to accomplish this. And uh, it's just not easy. It hasn't been easy for us. So I'll get it to you as soon as I can. And uh, maybe, maybe I'll send out a text notification. We're in Canada. So. All righty. Well, thank you for hanging out, guys, and uh, I'll see you, I don't know, sometime this week, maybe Sunday, I don't know. But I guess you better have the notification, because I don't even know what day I'm going live this week. Um, well, I get a shot on Thursday, so probably not Friday morning, because what if I'm all, like, sweatpants out, like, ugh, I feel sick. Who knows? Trying to cop out word? I don't know what that means, but yes, that is a cop out. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Sayonara. If it ever ends, I click the button. It's been lagging today. Here we go.